Hello, good morning and welcome to the Area Planning Committee meeting of the Dorset Council Western and Southern Area on this Thursday the 28th of May. Hello, good morning and welcome. I'd like to welcome you to today's meeting and I'd like to mention first the names of the committee members. Myself, Simon Christopher as chair. And alphabetically, Peter Barrow, Kelvin Clayton, Susan Cocking, Jean Dunseith, David Gray, the Vice Chair, Nick Ireland, Louis O'Leary, David Shortell, Sarah Williams and Kate Weller comprise the members of the committee. You will hear today from officers of the committee, including Anne Collins, who's the area lead major applications West team. We will hear from senior planning officers Bob Burden, Emma Telford and Joe Riley. We hope to have with us today highways officers Guy Tetley and Colin Graham. We should also have with us tree officers Chris Lloyd and Graham Cox. Uh, we also have Lara Altree, the solicitor, Denise Hunt, the Democratic Services Officer, will be taking the minutes in this the morning session. So if we can do a roll call of members of the committee, please. Uh, Peter Barrow. Present. Uh, Calvin Clayton. I'm here. Susan Cocking. I'm here. Jean Dunseith. Here. David Gray. Here, Chair. Nick Ireland. Present. Louis O'Leary. Present. David Shortell. <coughs> David. I don't seem to have David here at the moment. Uh, Sarah Williams. I'm here. And Kate Weller. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Denise, do we have any apologies? Chairman, I haven't received any apologies for this morning's meeting. OK, uh, do we have any declarations of interest? Yes, Chairman. Yes, Chairman. Yes, Chairman. Yes, Chairman. Yes, I need to say something as well. Right, OK. Yes, so, Chairman. So it's probably best that we run down the list. Uh, Peter Barrow, do you have any declarations? I do. And it's just for clarity, really, and it's reference to the Roman Road application. Yes. I, made, I made some comments to Weymouth Town Council at a meeting back in July 2019, where I expressed the views of local residents. And it's just to confirm that I come to this meeting with an open mind. And I'm happy to listen to what's said at the meeting and make my mind up as you know, we normally do at these meetings. <clears throat> it's for clarity, and I have copied you into the advice I've received from Jonathan Mayer uh, reference this. Uh, clearly, therefore, you should take the advice of the legal officer. Uh, Kelvin Clayton, any declarations? Um, yes, it's just to do with item um, 5F chair. The, the, the key West Bay did co come before Bridport Town Council Planning Committee, which I sat on. I checked yesterday and I actually sent my apologies for that meeting. So just to make it clear, I was not at the meeting when it was discussed. Thank you, Councillor Clayton. Uh, Councillor Cocking? No, I have none to declare. Uh, <coughs> Councillor Dunseith? Uh, yes, Chairman. I'd like to declare predetermination for planning application WD stroke D stroke 19 stroke 002865. And I would will take no part in the conversation or vote, but I would like to speak as a ward member. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor David Gray. Yes, Chairman, thank you. Yes, my uh, declaration relates to 5A Roman Road, first up on the agenda. I previously spoke against this uh, proposal at Weymouth Town Council. Uh, I've also been involved with uh, a group of residents who were opposed to the development. So uh, I'm predetermined on this issue. I won't take part in the discussion or in the vote. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Gray. Uh, Councillor Ireland. I have nothing. 
Thank you, Councillor Ireland. Uh, Councillor O'Leary. Uh, uh, for application WP1900516 at the land west of Roman Road, north of Spa Road. Um, I know the agent, uh, Mr. Richard Burgess, um, on a personal level. Um, I've been at the same sort of dinner things as he has, so I'm not sure um, whether I should actually take part. I don't know if the legal officer would like to clarify that. Um, I'm not predetermined in the application, but it could be a conflict of interest. Hello, Councillor. It's the Lara Orchard here, legal officer. Good morning, Lara. Um, it, it's really a matter for you. If you feel that your uh, relationship with the agent means that uh, you could be seen to be biased uh, on this application, it may be better for you to just decide not to take part. Yeah, I, I'm chairman on that one. I will not take part, actually. Just better say than sorry. Uh, thank you, Councillor O'Leary. Uh, Councillor Shortell, do we Chair, have... Chair, it's Anne Collins here. Sorry, can I just draw something else to your attention? Yes, please, uh, Anne, yes. The, the agent for the Roman Road application is also the agent for the Trafalgar Farm application, so Councillor O'Leary may want to um, consider I'll, that I'll as well. As well, then. Yes, I noted that. I noted uh, that point. Uh, Councillor Shortell, do we have Councillor David Shortell? Uh, Councillor Sarah Williams. Yes, thank you, Chair. On um, application 5F for Harbour Master's Office at uh, West Bay, I sit on Dorset Council Harbour Committee. This application has not been discussed there. It was discussed at Bridport Town Council Planning Committee. I declared an interest there and left the room, so uh, I d don't. Uh, I will be taking part in the discussion. OK, thank you, Councillor Williams. Uh, Councillor Weller. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, the Roman Road uh, application, um, I was part of the uh, Weymouth and Portland Planning Committee when that came up there um, and I made my de declarations there, so I feel I should not do so this time, which is something of a shame because it looks as though an awful lot of the Weymouth um, councillors are going to be precluded from that um, discussion now, um, but so be it. Um, and on the uh, application for the Harbour Quayside at West Bay, as chairman of the Harbours Committee, I should um, not take part in that conversation either. Thank you. OK, thank you, Councillor Weller. The minutes, you will have all received copies of the minutes of the last meeting. Uh, if there are any additions or amendments to be made, uh, please can you indicate by using the chat box function and then I will sign the minutes at a later date when we return to normality. Chair, do we need a proposal or a seconder for that? Uh, which is what I was going to say. Sorry. Uh, if we can, for documentary purposes, uh, have somebody proposing by use of the chat box and somebody's seconding, uh, then we will move forward. Good. Thank you. So we will now move forward. Uh, to Chair, Chairman, it's De it's Denise. Um, for the purposes of the minutes, um, could could the proposer and seconder of the minutes please state? Yes, if if you'd like to formally make an announcement that you are proposing as well. As I'm happy to propose, Councillor Ireland. Uh, thank you, Councillor Ireland. As and well. I'll second that, Councillor Gray. Uh, thank you for seconding, Councillor David Gray. Uh, public participation. The committee has received a number of written representations submitted in accordance with the amended speaking protocol for planning committee meetings, including within this agenda. These will be read out by an officer not involved in the application and taken in the following order. Objectors, supporters, 
we will then hear from councillors, applicants and agents in that order. So, our next item is item number 5A, WP 19-00516, oblique FUL, land west of Roman Road and north of Spa Road, Weymouth. The erection of 13 houses and six flats with associated access and parking. And our case officer is Bob Budden. Thank you, Chairman. Good morning, Bob. Good morning, Chairman. Good morning, Mr. Burden. Good morning. Right. Thank you, Chairman. This application is an application for 19 dwellings, land west of Roman Road, and north of Spa Road, Weymouth. Uh, in terms of location, the site is shown here in the red line. It's on the north side of Weymouth town, uh, linked to Rain Roman Road, which links through to Spa Road. Spa Road is here and Spa Road runs between Radipole and the Dorchester Road over on this side. So the um, Dorchester Road is over here, Weymouth Dorchester main route, and our site is uh, about five minutes walk up Spa Road from the Dorchester Road. We also have the Weymouth Way, which uh, passes the site here, which runs between Chafee's Roundabout down towards Weymouth and the Manor Roundabout up here near the supermarkets. Uh, this this, this uh, plan here is an aerial photograph which shows the, the location and nature of the site. The site is <coughs> sector of land, cease boundary, abuts properties um, on this side, Roman Road, and runs down. There's a copse within the application site here, and it runs along the northern side of Spa Road before running all the way back along the edge of the woodland, which is the part of the strategic mature landscaping for the Weymouth Way Road over here. On this uh, slide, you can also see the informal route of the, the, the footpath that runs across the site. That runs off right all the way up to Manor Roundabout, giving a route out there. And also you can see the route running down the site here, exiting onto Spa Road, which then gives access to other routes uh, towards Weymouth and uh, other, other routes away from the site. Uh, the site is um, considered a sustainable site because it, it is close to uh, various facilities. Along five minutes walk down towards Dorchester Road, you have a couple of churches on the way down Spa Road. At Dorchester Road, there's a news agent's barbers, convenience store, uh, the Spa Hotel, of course, and various other local facilities in that area. Uh, the at this point here, we have access onto the National Cycle Route and that route alongside the Weymouth Way, one and a half miles will take you down into Weymouth Town Centre and to the railway station. There are also bus stops on the Dorchester Road, uh, five minutes walk from the site in, in that direction. Also to locate your chairman, in my report I've mentioned a number of listed buildings over in Radipole Village and the nearest of those are this grouping here, which includes the church, manor house and old school room. And those are at least 100 metres from the application site as the crow flies. The nearest part of the site is right over here. And of course, you've got dense belts of trees on the eastern side of the Weymouth Way and also similarly on the, the embankment of the uh, western side of Weymouth Way. And this is just an extract from the local plan chairman, just to give you a bit more context in policy terms. The defined development boundary of uh, Weymouth is this black line here, which runs along the edge of the site. So the site is outside the defined development boundary. But as I've made clear in my report, in uh, extensive discussion of the principle of development, we need to bear in mind that we do not have a five year land supply with 4.83 years at the moment and that such sites, if they're sustainable, should be seriously considered for uh, development potential. Uh, also on this slide, we have the conservation area boundary shown in red here, 
which is a large conservation area which extends over Radipole village and uh, I've explained in depth in my report why the context of the application site which is defined by the area here why that site its, its landscape context has been substantially changed as a result of the Weymouth Way road being put through in uh, 1987. Uh, just to give you an overview of the site uh, and we have uh, one access in from Roman Road which uh, serves the, a block of six flats to the, to the north part of the site. Uh, the road, Roman Road would then be continued into the site serving a number of dwellings with a private access road uh, at the end of that serving several more and then on Spa Road we have five dwellings each with their own vehicular access served off off that route now to give you a little bit more detail on the layout as we come in off roman road as i said the the six affordable flats in this block here with their communal parking area there uh, this area at the top here would be reserved for uh, wildlife conservation enhancement and would be planted up accordingly we also have the accommodation of the informal footpath route that is shown that, that exists at the moment which would be accommodated down the western edge boundary all the way down the site shown there and then as i said roman road comes around into the site we have uh, semi-detached and detached dwellings culminating in several detached dwellings further into the site there uh, this is the uh, cupressus tree which has a tree preservation order on it the trunk of the tree is actually not in, within the application site but obviously a a substantial portion of the crown spread overhangs the site and the scheme has been designed in such a way as to uh, not have a detrimental effect on that tree and indeed one of my conditions uh, reflects ensuring that uh, any ground disturbance in that area is kept to a minimum together with a protective fencing condition. Moving to the southern part of the site so just to re look at that's, that's the TPO tree I mentioned so in the southern part of the site uh, more scope for additional landscaping here we would have a, a native hedgerow planted and along a substantial part of the western boundary up here there would be hedgerows planted in this area here additional planting here and there is a, an existing copse of trees here which would uh, some of those would need to be removed and um, uh, our uh, landscape officer favours more in the way of replanting than retention of those, although certain ones could could be retained. As regards the um, Spa Road frontage, we would have uh, the dwellings here, each with their own uh, access with parking and turning off road. There would be a, a low brick frontage wall along there, which is consistent with uh, what, what occurs in the area along Spa Road here also. And this gives you a general indication of the character of the, the street scenes that would be produced. This is the Spa Road frontage, existing uh, semi-detached dwellings here, early 20th century, quite nice characterful with, with bay windows, chimneys, etc. Nice detailing and that sort of detail, I'll say a little bit more about that in subsequent slides, but that sort of detail is, is uh, replicated in, in this scheme. So you can see the general sort of appropriateness of scale and general design from the street seen there onto Spire Road. And then looking at the Roman Road end, this is the block of six flats, just so now outline as you come into the site and you sweep round as the new section of Roman Road will be created. So we see again um, uh, appropriateness of scale of dwellings and an interesting variety of uh, treatments appropriate to the uh, context and the nature of adjacent development. So on Spa Road, just to give you a bit more of a flavour of the actual uh, dwellings, we have uh, the use of render above brick, which is quite characteristic of the area, uh, timber effect treatments to gable ends, chimneys, string coursing, adding interest to the development given that it's within the conservation area. Another one spiraled here, we see string coursing again, uh, cladding, tile cladding to gable ends together with brick detailing, chimneys, bay windows, uh, scalloped roof detailing here is apparent together with variable interesting brick coursing 
and a full height bay window there on that dwelling. And this is back to Roman Road as you enter the site just with the front elevation of the block of uh, six affordable housing units. It's the tapering chimney, which gives it an interesting distinctive character. Natural slate for the roof, bay, projecting bay window here. So quite an interesting bit of feature work on that dwelling, on that uh, block of flats, Chairman. So moving around to Roman Road, we have uh, a pair of canted uh, cottages, uh, render over brick. Uh, brick plinth to the base, adding a little bit more stance to the to the building together with chimneys. Moving along more string coursing. Uh, natural slate roofs, cladding to, to uh, gable ends. And then moving on to a few photos. This is on the Spa Road frontage of the site. So the frontage runs all up this side here and you can see the intermittent nature of the hedgerow uh, bramble uh, thorn various other bits and pieces within that a bit, bit unconsolidated but obviously uh, has, has uh, 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 a green sort of uh, verdant appearance to it the uh, footpath i mentioned the existing footpath en um, enters the site there and that, that point of entry and exit would be retained in the scheme you can also see the the site is sloping down here on this section of Roman, sloping down to the west. There are some traffic calming measures in this area, and I'll, I'll mention those a bit more on another slide. But the road is narrowed along this point and gives priority to vehicles coming up the hill. So those coming down it would give way to those coming up the hill. There are also some uh, raised platforms as well. So traffic calming measures are present in this area. And this is just, just moving slightly west from that point. So here we have the, the Weymouth Way that, that uh, passes around the, the back of the, the west of the site. And you can see that the, the real mature extent of the tree planting that has occurred on the embankments on both sides, our site obviously being over the top of this embankment here. And this obviously this photo is taken from the, the bridge over the Weymouth Way, the road bridge over the Weymouth Way. And similarly, uh, substantial existing tree planting built on the west side. So just, just stepping back from that point, this just gives you a view to the west, Weymouth Way is there. To the west you have, you can see that group of listed buildings I mentioned, which are over 100 metres from the application site and well screened by the, the nature of existing uh, trees and coupled with the distance from the application site. So just turning to look due east up the hill, as I mentioned, traffic priorities for vehicles coming up the road as they cross over the Weymouth Way Bridge here. So vehicles at the top would give way to uh, vehicles coming up the hill. So this is just giving you a bit of a character of the existing development on Spa Road further to the east as we're running up towards the application site. So you can see obviously nice detailing on ridges, uh, full height bay windows, uh, natural slate is used quite quite often, uh, projecting bays, uh, tile cladding. So these are the sort of items that we've sought to pick up on the, uh, the scheme that's been presented to you now. Moving right up close to the application sites, this is uh, properties immediately adjacent to the application site, projecting bay windows, timber detailing here which uh, has been that sort of detail has been incorporated in some elements of the scheme we have and then you'll see the the cops in the corner of the site here and you can see from this photo that uh, it's predominantly very sort of spindly sort of leggy sort of vertical growth that they're not sort of uh, um, substantial individual specimens it's all quite a sort of uh, mix so it's 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 not the most substantial in terms of uh, uh, arboricultural strength, but it is a nevertheless a, an existing copse in that corner of the site. That's yeah, this is showing you the full frontage, the copse as I mentioned, together with other other trees and intermittent planting running down that frontage of the site where the five dwellings would have their accesses onto Spa Road. This is Roman Road running up towards the application site at the top here. Again, we see features like uh, cladding, uh, timber and tile, projecting bays, so it picks up on those sort of features. Spa Road perhaps has slightly more in the way of architectural 
historic interest than, than some sections of Roman Road. But nevertheless, there are features here that we could uh, pick up on to incorporate in the scheme. And the other side of a Roman Road, again, we see things like timber cladding, bay windows, these sort of features that have been picked up. And then as we come up to the end of Roman Road, so we're into the application site here, you see a style there which gives uh, pedestrians the opportunity to access into that field to go off either towards the path towards Manor Roundabout or off towards um, Spa Road and beyond that way. Into the application site then you can see it's uh, uh, a lot of rough grassland with bramble overgrowth and other similar scrub vegetation. This is looking to the north from just crossing over into the field from uh, uh, from Roman Road. And that's just turning back, looking east towards the, the, the gardens of Mount Pleasant Avenue to the east of the application site. And that's just showing a view within the site of the tree belt, which obviously forms part of the substantial screening, which uh, is on the east side of the um, Weymouth Way. And this is just standing at the, the, the northern end of the, towards the northern end of the site, looking south towards the Spa Road frontage down here. Here we see the uh, cypress tree, which uh, has uh, a tree preservation order on it, and that would be retained in the scheme and safeguarded as part of the proposals. Also the Weymouth Way beyond the screening planting here and the copse I mentioned down in this area here. Uh, this just shows the informal nature of the existing footpath route that runs off towards Manor Roundabout to the north of the site. This is an area which, which would be uh, ecologically improved with a, a greater variety of species as part of the scheme through the biodiversity mitigation plan to give greater ecological variety. And then down at the uh, bottom, the southern end of the site, looking back from Spa Road up the site, see here that the informal view, route, route of the footpath running down the site, that's a uh, dwelling in uh, Roman Road. And the cypress tree is there. So just give you a feel for the, the general character of the, the site as is. And this is uh, just, just showing you a detail of the point of, of uh, the footpath access onto Spa Road from the application site. And just to run through the key planning matters, as I said, adjacent to the development boundary, but although it's outside, it's 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 considered a very sustainable location for the reasons I've outlined. It's an appropriate development in the conservation area given the current context and the, the senior conservation officer has been involved in commenting on the, the revised amended plans and now considers this a, a much improved scheme from what we, we commenced with, uh, as, as indeed do I. The footpath link is retained and improved as we see by the, the the route down the western side, the gravel path route down the western side of the site. The ecological matters have been addressed through both uh, a detailed biodiversity mitigation plan and by um, a contribution towards ecology for off-site off purposes. Uh, we also have a, an opportunity here to secure on-site 35% affordable housing, actually 32% affordable housing on site with the, the shortfall as, as a financial contribution of uh, about, which is over £29,000 uh, towards affordable housing as part of the scheme. Uh, and obviously, Chairman, uh, an opportunity to also uh, provide 19 dwellings in a, in a sustainable location and obviously contribute towards our, our uh, housing land supply uh, situation. The recommendation is to delegate authority to the head of planning subject to uh, addressing the affordable housing through a 106 agreement together with the £29,810 financial contribution, an offsite ecological contribution of £10,673, uh, ensuring that the gravel footpath is provided and is there in perpetuity for the pu public to pass and repass with maintenance and to a number of planning conditions, uh, including obviously wall and roof materials, including natural slate and Flemish bond brickwork to the elevations, details of the windows and doors, including all front elevation windows to be in white painted timber, surface water drainage scheme, uh, finished floor levels, tree protection measures, hardness of landscaping, 
a biodiversity mitigation plan, a landscape and ecological management plan, uh, charging scheme for electrical low emission vehicles, archaeology, footpath construction details, means of enclosure, boundary details, highway layout as, as indicated, as submitted, turning parking areas and details of the precise uh, architectural details together with uh, those informative chairman. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Burden. Uh, before we move on and hear representations from members, from uh, those who've contributed, I would just like to check is David Shortell in attendance? Councillor David Shortell. Do we have Councillor David Shortell? Right, we will now uh, have the representations that have been received by the Council and these will be today read out by an officer unconnected with this application. So Chelsea, can you commence the, uh, the reading of the representations? Thank you, Chairman. Um, so we've received 22 objections to this application. Um, which I'll now read out. Um, so the first one is from David Harris. Having represented SPA, uh, SPA Road on Dorset County Council in recent years and living in the area, I am very surprised that the highways team deem that it is safe for traffic to enter and leave properties on the Spa Road on the brow of a hill, especially where the speed bumps encourage traffic to swerve to the centre of road and distract drivers on the road from anything happening in adjacent houses. I would like it clearly noted that I think that this is a bad decision and if accidents happen on the brow of the hill on this very busy road, responsibility will lie with that department. Traffic travelling west through the road calming measure, which makes a statement in itself, have to give way to oncoming traffic. This means that traffic going east often accelerates through the ch chicane and this will take them past the entrances to the properties facing onto the road. Please think again about having access to Spa Road from this new development. The next one received is from Sally Parks. I understand you have been recommended to pass this plan application by Bob Bird and the plan officer. I use his reasoning to again object, object to this proposal. He states the proposal is in a sustainable location outside, but adjacent to the defined development boundary. The word outside means it is not inside the boundary. His assertion, because it is on the edge of it, is permissible. This attitude could lead to an urban sprawl, which I'm sure your committee does not want to be accused of. He considers the development unacceptable, is acceptable in terms of its design and general visual impact. I prefer the beauty of the paddock we have now. The wildflowers and grasses that have come since its abandonment during this plan application has added to the residents' enjoyment. Please consider our mental health, especially in these unprecedented times. He considers that there will be no significant adverse effect on neighbouring residential amenities. I would disagree as a narrow approach road to the development must surely cause a huge adverse effect on the community. Already cars are parked on the pavement of Roman Road. The cul-de-sac nature of the development will cause even more congestion in the immediate area that, that, than occurs already. His next reason is there is no, are no material considerations which would warrant refusal of this application. This statement makes no sense at all. My concern is if this plan application is refused, the council will have to compensate the builders. That fact should not influence your decision. Please refuse this development. The next one is from Janet Dalton Forster. Please lodge my protest at the proposal to build west of Roman Road and north of Spa Road, Weymouth. The site is in Radapol cons Conservation Area. This is home to mo multiple species of wildlife, insects and flora that could be rare species. And until the relevant professional bodies examine the site to confirm this, please do not give consent to this destruction. The next is from Charles Parks. My objections to the above application are when the Weymouth Relief Road was built, residents in the area were compensated for the increase of traffic, noise and foreseeable pollution. Building even closer to this road can only be detrimental to anyone living there. Trees growing there form a buffer now, but will inevitably be reduced when building takes place, resulting in more noise and pollution. Local residents appreciate this space with its abundance of wildlife and for the use of the field for local and national celebrations. Access via Roman Road is totally unsuitable for larger vehicles. The houses in this road have minimal off-street parking, causing parking on pavements. When non-residents visit and park on Roman Road and not on the pavement, it becomes impossible for emergency vehicles to pass. Please consider my objections to this totally unnecessary application. 
The next is from Sue and Paul Tyndall. We are right in to strongly oppose the planning to build housing on the field at the top of Roman Road, Radapole. We have lived in our house since 1978 and enjoyed the lovely green open space for that time. It is the only green space in this area and used for many by recreation, dog walking, etc. The residents living alongside the field in Mount Pleasant South, Roman Road and Spa Road will be greatly affected by increased traffic noise, which is at the moment in a quiet area with lots of birds and wildlife. We're asking you to stop this development going ahead to preserve this special part of Radapole. The next is from Jonathan Cartwright. There are a continuing number of concerns I have regarding the application as a whole, and in particular, the contents of the plan planning officer's report recommending the acceptance of the application. These are as follows. The report is unclear on the fact that the, the development is wholly within a designated conservation area. Whilst I am not a plan expert, it appears unlikely to me that it is appropriate for a planning committee to approve such a clear contravention of the intent of the conservation area designation. The development area is not included in an existing local plan. It in fact is specifically excluded from the existing local plan. The report does not mention that the land is a designated green corridor. It provides a connection between two significant SSSI sites. Removal of a significant amount of planting from this corridor will surely reduce its effectiveness. Section four of the report under, under ecology states there is a certificate of approval from the natural environment team, whereas in section nine, it states that a revised plan is under review by the net, which is true. In section five of the report under landscaping it states significant planted in, is retained. In fact, less than 10% of the trees on the site are retained. The report makes reference to verbal discussions with the tree officer. Throughout the whole process of the application, there are repeated references to unpublished correspondence from the tree officer. Once again, in this report, the tree officer's opinions are not in writing. In summary, the plan officer's report seems to make a recommendation that is based on inconsistent presentation of the facts of the site. The application and the responses of statutory consultees, if approved, there will be clear grounds of appeal to the local government ombudsman. The next is from Darius Rishereri. My name is Darius Rishereri and I'm a resident in Roman Road, Weymouth. I wish to serve note of strong objection to the plan and proposal land west of Roman Road and north of Spa Road, Weymouth. Firstly, I must challenge the bold assertion of Plan Officer Bob Burden that there is not an adverse effect on a residential amenity. My children play there, other residents' children play there, and it is used most days as a walkthrough to get to Radapole Village and beyond. Secondly, and perhaps most strongly, how on earth can this be considered to have no negative impact regarding vehicular access and highway safety? The junction between Roman Road and Mount Pleasant Avenue South is already a potential accident area, with extra traffic from the recent Eden Park residential development contributing to near misses as cars tend to cut this corner. Having the proposed development will mean three directions for traffic all to meet at the same junction. It was recently reported in the local press that there was also a proposal to expand the Cherries residential home again on Mount Pleasant Avenue. What I can't see is any joined up thinking in that it's not just this specific development on the land, but the other developments in the vicinity that will use the same roads as presumably, presumably the same main commute times. So increasing the traffic at this junction. This road is actually part of a well-known and advertised cycle path to Dorchester. How can this not be considered an extra hazard? Vehicles have been known to park well within 10 metres of this junction, see highway code, sometimes on the junction, inhibiting visibility of oncoming traffic around this corner. In addition, the route from Spa Road to Ison Road and rejoining Dorchester Road is used as a rat run to avoid traffic on Dorchester Road. This extra traffic due to the proposed development will only add to traffic and hazard along these feeder roads. Although there is a need for housing in Weymouth, there are also many dwellings and unfinished developments that remain unoccupied which could make homes for local people without building on ancient and valued land. The general dismissive tone of the planning officer's recommendation to the committee regarding development does not does seem to question logic and joined up thinking of the impact of other very close developments. The next is from Martin Davis. I object to the application. I trust you have all visited the site and must be wondering why we are proposing to, to build on a conservation area outside the DDB. In 2017, Matt Prosser wrote to Richard Drax, agreeing that the matter of the land sale and its influence over planning would be considered at the planning stage. I made this abundantly clear in my formal objection. It has been overlooked in the report. The land will be sold to developer only if the plan application is successful. It has been alluded that DC may have to financially compensate the developer if permission is not granted. 
If this is true, then I consider your free decision is compromised. However, if you elect to refuse permission, the council will be at liberty to withdraw the land from sale and remove the threat of a costly appeal. I strongly urge the committee to seek a legal brief over the status of the contract before any decision is made. Confusion reigned when WPBC, spooked by unification, had a fire sale of pockets of land they considered at the time to be suitable for housing. The sole purpose to raise capital for the town ahead of unification. We see now that WTC unanimously, unanimously objects listing a host of reasons. At Paris 16.35, the report overturns WTC objection on the flimsiest of evidence, which is the plan officer has made a unilateral decision repeated often through the report that in his view, the land, although outside the DB, is adjacent to it and thus the conservation area links to the adjacent houses and not the Radipole conservation area. Consequently, building on a conservation area outside the DB enhances the conservation area, a gross misdirection. This proposal also sets a precedence, making any land adjacent to development fair play. Where does this stop? I implore you to consider very carefully the long term impact of your decision. At Paris 16.3 through to 16.9, there is total capitulation to the national planning model. Because DC does not have a viable five year plan, you are hostage to the appeals process, consequently removing freedom to make proper decisions to benefit the community you are elected to support. I conclude that as a planning committee, your role in shaping our community is in jeopardy and the odds are stacked in the favour of the developer. However, with this application, you have a chance to save a valuable piece of community land and stop the cancer of development creep. In a non-existent five year plan, adding 19 houses when so many are underway or planned in Weymouth is irrelevant. The sacrifice of a much loved conservation area can never be recovered. The next is from Jill Davis. I object to the application. I will offer counter proposals to the four main reasons for recommendation. Sustainable and adjacent to defined development boundary. Since when did adjacent to become a primary reason to consume an open piece of land that defines the development boundary? This land is recognised in the local plan as not suitable for development principally because it is the boundary for development and has to be sustained as such. Conservation. In the Conservation Officer's most recent comments to the application, her closing paragraph reads, as it currently stands, the development still cannot be said to either enhance nor preserve the setting, character and appearance of the conservation area. The minor improvements made to date do not fundamentally address the concerns raised. This site is an important green buffer to the conservation area. The plan officer's report would have you believe the exact opposite. No adverse effect on the local residential amenity. I disagree. Roman road traffic has increased significantly since the Eden Park development and at the time of that development we were promised by councillors that any future local development would take this into account. This has been totally overlooked by Dorset Highways who have not made a single comment about approaches to the site on either Spa Road or Roman Road. This is gross shortcoming. Moreover, I am directly overlooked by the grossly oversized block of flats which has been positioned at the highest point in the field. This roof line stretches the entire width of three adjacent properties in Mount Pleasant and entirely interrupts the skyline. There are no material considerations. This is a very broad category, but I wish to comment on a couple of important matters. Firstly, the housing and enabling team's report duplicated in the plan officer's report is co convoluted, stating residential development outside defined development boundaries is not generally considered sustainable and would be considered as an exception site. House 1 identifies exception sites as being available just for affordable housing and would not be granted plan consent for open market housing. He follows this up with a complex discussion concluding that the provision of six discount market houses overrides normal planning policy. Is this truly acceptable to the committee? Secondly, can I remind you of the climate emergency signed up to by WTC and DC? And while this was very low on the agenda in 2017, when the land was proposed for development, a lot has changed. Can we really sacrifice a much loved green space that is outside the development boundary, especially when there are at least 11 major housing programmes in place or approved in the Weymouth area alone? The next is from Jennifer Robinson. The addition of further homes within a very small distance from the recent Eden Park development would subject Roman Row to yet another period of many months of works traffic, including HGVs, followed swift, swiftly by permanent additional traffic from 19 new homes. Living on the corner of Roman Road and Mount Pleasant Avenue South has given me visual evidence of HGVs struggling to manoeuvre our road as well as the, as the lack of parking available due to many existing houses not having driveways. 
adding an estimated 30 additional vehicles traveling up and down Roman Road in excess of once a day, many of which will be either be joining either Ison Road to access Dorchester Road or Spa Road to access Dorchester Road can only add to the congestion in all of these locations, all of which are already lined with parked cars on both sides of the road. Being in the sought after Radical school catchment area, all the above mentioned roads are largely populated by families with young children. The safety of these children does not appear to have been considered. Another favoured route from the area in question to out of town takes traffic along the daily along the road directly in front of Radapole School. A discussion with our local police force is all required to confirm the traffic congestion already in existence. The land in question is used by children to access their friends and family's houses, along with the scout hut in Radapole village, thus removing the need to walk along busy roads for the entire route. Although access would be retained in the development plan, this would be among increased traffic versus the currently empty field. In the current climate, I would be, feel it would be inappropriate not to mention lessons from the COVID-19 outbreak. Let us value the natural spaces and the established wildlife and not further underestimate this value within our communities. Although the plan application appears to acknowledge no concerns over traffic flow, I question the logic of not specifically addressing the reality as above and the selection of a development site with an overused road system. The next is from Dr Jane Healy and Lee Cornell. We live in the house directly to the east of the planned development on Spa Road. A number of fellow residents that border the property have or will speak today about various issues relating to development and why they object. In our previous objections, we have noted a number of issues with building on this rather small amount of green space, such as the potential danger of building houses with access onto Spa Road in an area where traffic carbon is already, un is already necessary. The loss of further green space and a habitat, habitat for wildlife and concerns specific to our property in bordering the development. The concerns we would reiterate are the development actually does not address the main need for the accommodation in Weymouth. From a number of discussions, it is clear that Weymouth is in most need of one and two bedroom properties. As we face the prospect of another economic downturn as a result of the current COVID-19 situation, it seems rather obtuse to approve a plan that whilst amongst meeting the 35% figure for affordable housing, although requiring a financial charge to meet that condition, does not provide anything extra, instead producing more three and four bed accommodation of what there is already an existing housing stock available. It is probable that these new houses may be out of the financial range of a, of a significant number of Weymouth residents. Bearing in mind current building developments in and around Weymouth that are more substantial and the fact that a charge is being paid because the 35% threshold on affordable housing has not been met, it seems to move towards the conclusion that the main driver of the council is cash generation over and above the preservation of a relatively small piece of land for the good of the community. It was never made clear to us as homeowners directly bordering this property that it would be used for anything other than animal grazing until it was clear the council were intending to put the land up for sale. The council did not offer residents a reasonable, reasonable amount of time to convene any kind of alterna, alternative plan that would make good community use of the land or even that this was an option. Lastly, it seems unusual that the one department of the council is pressing for the sale and the development of this land whilst another actively puts a protection order on a tree at the rear border of our property in order to prevent aggressive development plans. We remain opposed to the development. The next one is from Dr Alec Rocheri. As a frequent visitor from Yorkshire to visit my son living in Radapole, Weymouth, I was very saddened to hear of the plans to develop the land at the top of Roman Road, according to WP-19-00516-FUL. slash 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 I, I have enjoyed walking my grandsons over this land for the past eight years and the same activity through a housing estate would not be the same. I understand many new housing developments have arisen around Weymouth and wonder why this particular development is essential for the local needs. In addition, I do, not, I do worry about the safety of my grandsons as they grow up on Roman Road, being exposed to an ever increasing level of traffic. I'd hoped to move to the area to spend more time with my grandsons, but with my son now considering moving out of the area, due to level of development on his doorstep, this option is no longer something I can act on at this time. Please note this objection from someone living out of the area who is saddened at this move for the sake of the bottom line, along with the strong possibility of my son and his family moving out of the area permanently. The next is from Karen and Richard Edgeley. We would like to make strong objections to the above planning proposal and we hope the planning committee will take note of all the strong local feeling and reject the building of any houses on the top field of Roman Road. We feel it has been rushed through without due process or consideration of the negative impact it will have on the area. 
It seems to us that it is just based on a strong desire to raise revenue. The whole process has not been investigated thoroughly or fairly. We are hoping that all the planning committee have at some point been on site to see the problems of building the, on this site and have taken time to make a reasoned view. I hope that there are individuals on the committee who will argue our case and not just rubber, rubber stamp the proposals. We fully support all the objections that have been highlighted to you in the past, but we have two very important objections. The first and most important, important would be the irretrievable loss of conservation area and green space along with the natural habitat. In this present climate, we really should be protecting the space for future generations. Once lost, it can never be retrieved. Secondly, it was never designated as building land and the associated problems of traffic increase in Roman Road and Spa Road mean it would become highly congested and not safe. Please stop this development and focus on better sites for building. The next is from Glenda Fraser. Please do not grant plan permission to this application. Development, developing this site does not make economic sense, only the, the developer will benefit financially. Good local builders are booked more than a year ahead, so this development will raise the price of local labour as good builders get harder to find, having a negative impact on local people. The derisory sum, sum of £29,810 in lieu of affordable housing would not cover the costs of a 12 square metre kitchen extension. This development is not in the character and character of the area. Our area consists of self-built houses, which gives them their character. The character is so missing from this application. In the 50s, a caring council grew up sustainable guidance for developing the single plots. I plan to show these fabulous deeds at the public hearing. Our local development plan shows this site outside the boundary. This is a legal and adopted plan. It is flouting the law to claim that a site adjacent a legal boundary has somehow now become part of the development boundary. It is not. This is unacceptable logic. Would it be acceptable for me to build a house on my neighbour's land because it is adjacent to my boundary? How is this situation any different? What kind of unworkable precedent would be set if this application was approved? It is giving people license to build adjacent to their properties. Really? This development is not sustainable. Overdevelopment, greed and riding roughshod over nature has got us into this COVID-19 mess and we have to learn the lesson. Wildlife habitats, fields of grazing, for exercising, for sound barriers, for fresh air, for peace and inspiration must be protected and not be sold off to the highest bidder on a whim. Open spaces have been built into our local plans and we have strongly expressed our democratic right to protect them. This proposal does impact negatively on the neighbours. It is insulting to us ratepayers that comments from over 70 people were ignored by the plan officer that there is, in his opinion, no negative impact created by this application. As our democratically elected leaders, please uphold the democratic right of the Radipole and other Dorset residents to protect our field. The owls, deer, butterfly foxes, rabbits, badger or endangered dormice were not consulted on how it would impact them. The field is a land bank for the children of Weymouth who will have to pay for the massive debt their elders have inflicted on them and they should decide in the, the, the next local development plan the future of our field. The next is from Richard Sloan. The land was gifted by local benefactors, the Cox family, to the council and has remained a green lung in an expanding urban environment ever since, enhancing the natural environment. Residents and wildlife alike benefit from the small area which lies within the conservation area and mirrors Radipole Wood on the opposite side of the Relief Wood Road. Such green spaces reduce the town's harmful carbon footprint and help mitigate effects on the greenhouse gases. In June 2019, DCC declared a climate emergency and adopted a policy plan in response. Developing this area from which there is no return would be in direct opposition to the council's own policy and would fly in the face of local democracy. Residents and other interested parties consider there would be significant adverse effect on neighbouring residential immunity. Already the Juno estate has realised the worst fears of res residents with a double in traffic on this quiet residential road, which includes cycle path number one and is a regular walkway for children going to Radipole Primary School and the Way Valley School, let alone those with disabilities at the Cherries who are regularly taken out for walks. Roman Road is a pinch point and the prospect of even more traffic is terrible. There will be even more noise and disruption, risks for road safety and contrary to national policy, it will in increase on pavement parking. How reckless. The proposal is not acceptable in terms of design and general visual impact and in no way preserves the character and appearance of the conservation area. The council's officer has presented the committee with what appears to be a very personal subjective view that again flies in the face of local democracy, seeming to be motivated, motivated by a minimal short term monetary benefit, 
denying the community's majority view that this development should not be allowed in perpetuity. Due process would appear not to have been followed in several instances, including the council's clear decision not to develop the area, letter from John Morgan, 25th of February, 2016, to residents, and regarding the re residents' consortium to purchase the field. There are worrying implications of a lack of impartiality. Personally, I am dis dismayed that on land that was greenbelt when we purchased our property, we are now going to be faced with a car park and overlooking blocks of flats. The visual pollution, damage to the environment and impact on quality of life for our Radapol community all add convincing argument that objections to this proposal should be upheld. The next is from Margaret Smith. I am writing to say that this little field at the end of a quiet, narrow, narrow cul-de-sac is a haven for wildlife and birds with beautiful trees, all needed in these days when so much countryside in this area is being ruined to build large estates. The field is completely unsuitable for housing and being built on would ruin the area with added noise and traffic, not to mention the lives of those who live in the immediate area. The cops at the Spa Road ending, ending alive with build, birds and to build on this small green haven would be disastrous. We do not have many little green areas left around here where wildlife can live. It is really necessary to ruin is it really necessary to ruin this little field just to build more very unnecessary houses? The next is from Stephen and Helen Roos. We would like to express our oppos opposition to the proposed plan to erect houses and fields on the land of Spa Road. We have set out our objections in more detail on the plan portal, but in brief we object to the fo on the following grounds. The site has never been included on any development plans and every time the plans were updated, it was never considered for development. The only reason the land was put up for sale was that WMPBC had a fire sale of all their assets prior to the reorganisation of councils in the slight hope that the proceeds would be retained by the new council. The trees act as a natural buffer between the top of Spa Road and the Relief Road and are an important habitat and wildlife corridor. With the spectra of climate change looming large, we should be preserving trees and not destroying them. Road safety. We are not convinced by the highways officers officer that having extra driveways accessing Spa Road near to a blind summit would not affect safety. Excess speed was noted as a factor on Spa Road several years ago, hence the traffic calming measures installed. These measures have been have proved to be ineffective as all that has happened is that traffic it has traffic speeds have become more erratic with traffic accelerating between the bumps, making it more difficult to predict whether the road is clear. Hopefully, the planning committee will see sense and, conser and conserve this green space to continue benefiting the local community. The next is from Dr Adam Fraser. I object to the application. My objection is that the proposed development is situated in a conservation area and is outside the development boundary and should not be developed. The documents in the proposal state in development is possible beca because the land is adjacent to the development boundary are incorrect. The only two exceptions to the development is in such an area are affordable housing or special architectural merit, and neither of these apply to this proposal. This land should be kept as much needed green space in Weymouth, which has a high population density. There are multiple other large housing developments in Weymouth and Portland, which together more, more than meet the current housing shortage. If plan permission should be granted, I'm concerned that the developer will submit a further proposal for even more intensive housing on this site which will be out of keeping with the local area and cause problems to parking and access. The precedent for development outside a development boundary in a conservation area will be set. The next is from Claudia Cunningham. Please do not grant permission to this application. Developing this site does not make economic sense. Only the developer will benefit financially. Good local builders are booked more near ahead, so this development will raise the price of local labour, as good builders get harder to find, having a negative impact on local people. The derisory sum of £29,810 in lieu of affordable housing would not cover the costs of a 12 square metres kitchen extension. This development is not in the character of the area. Our area consists of self-built houses, which gives them their character, the character so missing from this application. In the 50s, a caring council grew up sustainable guidance for developing the single plots. I plan to show these fabulous deeds at the public hearing. Our local development plan shows this site outside this boundary. This is a legal and adopted plan. It is felt in the law to claim that a site adjacent to a legal boundary has somehow now become part of the development boundary. It is not. This is unacceptable logic. Would it be acceptable for me to build a house on my neighbour's land because it is adjacent to my boundary? How is this situation any different? What kind of unworkable precedent would be set if this application was approved? It is giving people license to build adjacent to their properties, really? This development is not sustainable. 
Overdevelopment, greed and riding roughshod over nature has got us into this COVID-19 mess and we have to learn the lesson. Wildlife habitats, fields of grazing, for exercising, for sound barriers, for fresh air, for peace and inspiration must be protected and not be sold off to the highest bidder on a whim. Open spaces have been built into our local plans and we have strongly expressed our democratic right to protect them. This proposal does impact negatively on the neighbours. It is insulting to us ratepayers that comments from over 70 people are ignored by the plan officer that there is, in his opinion, no negative impact created by this application. As our democratically elected leaders, please uphold the democratic right of the Redipole and other Dorset residents to protect our fields. The owls, deers, butterfly, ra foxes, rabbits, badgers or endangered dormice were not consulted on how it would impact them. This field is a land bank for the children of Weymouth who will have to pay for the massive debt their elders have inflicted on them and they should decide in the next local development plan the future of our field. The next is from Gordon Cunningham. Objection to plan development. Since 2014, under the auspices of local planning, this area has seen the transformation of a family residence to initially a business site, then more recently a party Airbnb, max 20 visitors. The demolition of a retirement home in the building of 18 houses. The subsequent population expansion has brought the urban filling right up to the edge of the designated conservation area. In 2016, I received a communication from the Weymouth and Portland Property Services regarding the field. This stated, we are not seeking any other use, grazing land, and the intention is to keep the, the land in public ownership. In the period prior to the dissolution of Weymouth and Portland Borough Councils, the members decided to liquidate any spare parcels of land prior to unification. The full council met but failed to follow correct procedure and refused to call in the error. They did concede their mistake and agreed not to do it again in the future. As a local group, we have applied to purchase the field to retain its public access. We have received no formal correspondence as to why the bid was rejected or the rationale for ignoring our ambitions for the area. I suggest profit over social need. Since the return of the field to WMP Council Management in 2014, a proposal to maintain the area has not been fulfilled. Only in 2018, when I approached the Dorset Council, did the graduate estate surveyor communicate with us. She kindly agreed for a small area of the field to be cut for use for our Royal Wedding Street Party. The field has continued to be an accessible green space for local use, especially during the recent crisis. There are even more children playing and dogs being walked in family groups with a sensible regard for social distancing. This has already seen an increase since the expansion of 18 properties adjacent to the Cherries Children's Home. Since the WMP Council opened MPAS for housing development in 2016, the traffic flow has had an impact on the safety along both this road and Roman Road. Many Roman Road residents do not have off-road parking, which has emergency access ramification. The Route 1 cycle path also shares MA, MPAS and Roman Road. The new estate will ine inevitably create more car traffic. Construction access to the proposed site will require heavy vehicles entering via this current bottleneck. The plans show the view from the rear of the MPAS will be dominated by a block of flats in a car park. The next is from Hannah Mallison. I am writing to object to the proposed development of the land mentioned in the subject of this email. The current health crisis demonstrates the need for us to protect our green spaces, not only for the benefit of the environment, but also for the benefit of our mental health. I know that without the, that area close by and spaces just like that, I would have found the past weeks extremely difficult. So if this space design, defined as a conservation area can be built upon, what precedent does that set for the future? The next is from Gavin Roy. We object to this development for the following reasons. The site is within the conservation area. I note the comments in the committee report that is adjacent to the development boundary. I'm concerned that this sets a precedent and will surely lead to the erosion of our cons conservation areas as successive councils deem it suitable to develop within, within the conservation area, but adjacent to the development area. Subsequent generations will not get the benefit of the conservation areas. Fencing. Please don't surround the houses with six foot feather edge fencing. The developer's site is Chowbury Corner has heavy use of this fencing and as a result looks like a stockade. It is harsh, unwelcoming and would be completely at odds with the existing properties. I appreciate this may be the advice of the local police and is cheap and quick for the developer, but please consider using natural hedges to soften the effect. This would also provide some much needed habitat. The flats. The proposed flats at the top of Roman Road will dominate the site. They are at the highest point of the hill and are not in any way in keeping with the current four existing houses. They will be visible from miles around. 
I draw your attention to the new flats at the junction of Roman Road and Ison Road, which have maintained the existing roof line and have low walls and the same material as the elevations, a feature of the existing housing in the area. The proposed block of flats is ugly and generic with a very high roof line. I am concerned at the impact of privacy on people using their gardens in Mount Pleasant Avenue. Please ensure that if permission is granted, no further development is allowed into the roof space of these flats. Ecological impact. I cited the council's commitment to deliver in a healthy environment and to protect green assets. In my initial objections, I note the off-site contribution of £10,673 from the developer that was required to overcome this commitment. Could you please be transparent about where that con contribution is spent and what on? Will it be used in the local area to offset the ecological damage of this development? The final comment is from the agent Richard Burgess. Good morning, Chairman and Councillors. Our key points are the release of this site was decided by the former Weymouth and Portland Borough Council. You know you must treat applications involving council land in the same way as all others. However, the National Plan and Policy Framework instructs, instructs councils to bring forward land in public ownership, MPPF 118. My clients are a highly reputable developer. High quality developments are their trademark. They were selected to bring these proposals forward. They have a development option which will be pursued to its conclusion. We have had regard to the views of res residents. We conducted a public information exercise, including delivering leaflets to every household and holding a public exhibition so that all could have input. We have revised the plans, reduced the number of dwellings and accommodated residents' wishes are either provision of a public footpath and accesses to their gardens. We have worked to satisfy, satisfy your plan officers for more than 12 months. We have submitted 16 revisions to the master plan, also employed consultants in ecology, ecology, archaeology and arboriculture to satisfy your requirements. Also, conservation appraisals, green construction plans, drainage studies and an approved biodiversity mitigation and enhancement plan. We note your officers have made a positive recommendation, which we hope you will accept. Other points. This land has never been public open space. It was let under license for many years as a pony paddock. Some have asked why there isn't affordable housing for rental as part of the development. It isn't very practical to provide six or so units for rent. Housing associations tend to want large numbers of dwellings, but my clients are passionate about providing a first step on the purchase ladder for the young. They were building such units locally, e.g. in Broadmain, Puddletown and Piddle Hinton, before they became fashionable in government. The units will be provided at 70% of market value. This will be passed to subsequent purchasers. We approached your affordable housing officer and he was enthusiastic about this idea since it isn't currently provided in Weymouth. We have also agreed to make a Section 106 payment of £27,000, which will go towards off-site affordable rental housing. In response to objections by Weymouth Town Council, you will know that being just outside the development boundary is not of great relevance given your lack of five year land supply since it is in a sustainable location. While the site is in Radapur conservation area, but the spa area isn't, is not fatal, especially since sub substantial belts of trees on either side of Weymouth Way screen the site from Radapur village. Your conservation officer is satisfied with the design. And that's all the comments, Chairman. OK, thank you very much, Chelsea. Thank you for reading those. Uh, I think at this stage I would like to hear again from uh, Mr Burden with his comments on what he has heard. Uh, then I would like to hear from Anne Collins. Then I would like to hear from the legal officer as to what she's heard, the tree officer and the highways officer before we hear from councillors. So, Mr. Burden, do you have any comments to make on what you've heard, please? Yes, I do. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, if I can, uh, yeah, uh, take it from uh, the issue of the being outside the defined development boundary. I've explored this extensively in um, the section on the principle of the development in my report. And the position, as has been referred to, has been mentioned, uh, we do not have a five year housing land supply. We're at 4.83 years for this this area. That means that it, it undermines the efficacy and power of our housing policies within the adopted local plan. And it means we must therefore look very carefully at sites which come forward, which may be suitable, even if they are without 
without, even if they are outside the defined development boundary. Now, this is outside the defined development boundary in the adopted local plan, true. Um, it couldn't be any closer to the defined development boundary because it's adjacent to it. So we have to look at whether or not the location of this site in terms of the principle could be appropriate. And the first thing we look for these days is whether or not it's a sustainable location. Now, clearly it, it's, it's adjacent to a substantial urban area within Weymouth town. As I've uh, pointed out, there are within five minutes walk various local facilities, including churches, pub, news agents, other local shops. 10 minutes walk, you get to um, the Morrison's and Sainsbury's supermarkets. OK, Mr. Burton, if I can just stop you there, would it be possible for you to put your video on? We're, we're not actually seeing you, we're just seeing. Yes, Chairman, sorry. Uh, thank you ever so much. Um, yeah, so um, there are, in terms of local, very local facilities, there are a number available to any occupiers on the site. Um, secondly, in terms of wider public transport options, five minutes walk to bus stops on the Dorchester Road. The site is close to the National Cycle Network, which runs off down Weymouth Way, for example, one and a half miles down to Weymouth Town Centre with that, that wide range of shops and facilities, one and a half miles down that route by walking or cycling to the Weymouth Railway Station. So in terms of sustainability, this, this site does score pretty highly in my view on those criteria. Now, uh, one of the letters mentioned um, that a concern that the trees along the east side of Weymouth Way would be removed. That, that is not likely to be the case. Those, those trees form part of the strategic landscaping of Weymouth Way. They remain in public ownership and there is no proposal to remove those as part of this scheme. So that, that substantial bank of trees along the western edge of the site would be retained just for the avoidance of doubt on that point. Um, now, coming on to the conservation area, obviously this is an unusual situation, Chairman. We don't normally have a situation where uh, 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 a strategic road improvement um, carves its way through a conservation area, but that's what we have in this case. So the conservation area designated back in 1979, I, I believe, the road went in in 1987 and we have no conservation area appraisal for the conservation area but we do know that it appears to be part of the wider open setting for the older um, buildings of Radipole village and whilst this um, this site clearly it was part of that wider setting of of those uh, historic properties it now finds itself more than 100 metres from those and separated by the substantial engineering cutting of the Weymouth Way, together with the substantial embankment, mature planting of trees on either side of it. So it, it no longer has the original function that it used to have. So it, it's cut off as this sort of triangle of land, which, which you know, no longer has the relationship to the historic uh, dwellings of and setting of Radipole that it did. So, as it's a conservation area, clearly by definition, we need to ensure that any development um, preserves or enhances the character of that area. And so you would look at what's adjacent to it. If, if you were considering the possibility of building on it, you look at what's adjacent and the character of that area and whether or not the character of existing areas, which in this case incidentally are outside the conservation area, whether or not the details and character of those can inform development of this site. And that is a theme which has been explored through several revisions to these plans. And the comment was made that the uh, in representation of the conservation officer was not supportive of this scheme. That is not the case. They were initially not supportive. They were, they were, they could see that the, the an understanding of the principle of it, the site being developed because it no longer had the same role as it used to have prior to the, the, the bypass going in. So they, they, like me, reached the logical conclusion that the right thing to do would be to draw on the uh, qualities and character of the early 20th century buildings 
and incorporate a number of those features into the design of the dwellings for the site. And, and it's fair to say that there was a process of evolution with gradual improvements to the, the design over a period of time. And I, but I can confirm that the, the plans you've just been presented with are supported by the senior conservation officer because they include virtually every uh, design refinement she was seeking. So, so that's uh, something for members to bear in mind. Um, several people referred to the impact on the ecology of the site. Now, clearly development of the site does change the character of the site with removal of, of, of various vegetation etc but what's happened is there's been an ongoing dialogue for quite some time between the applicants ecologist and the natural environment team ecologist of the council to develop a thorough biodiversity mitigation plan and that plan incorporates a number of measures including uh, ecological planting at the northern end of the site on that triangle of land on the path where it disappears off, off the site towards Manor Roundabout. It includes a substantial native hedgerow and tree planting along the western central hedgerow on the western side of the proposed new route of the, the footpath. It includes various hedges within the site. It includes uh, various trees planted in gardens within the site. And the, the additional ecological financial contribution off site, which was also referred to in, uh, in representations, that uh, somebody queried where that would be spent. And the likelihood of where that would be spent is in connection with Radipole Local Nature Reserve. Now that's, that's, that um, biodiversity mitigation plan together with a contribution is completely consistent with our, our policy on dealing with ecology. So the ecological issue is, is addressed. There's also going to be a condition, uh, there is a condition proposed for the biodiversity mitigation plan to be uh, carried out as submitted. There's a um, condition for a landscape and ecology, ecological management plan to be submitted as, as well. Um, together with uh, a hardened landscaping condition. So landscaping, rest assured, is something we're concerned about and the ecological uh, considerations have been satisfactorily addressed by this application. Uh, clearly some of the trees in that copse in the southeast corner would be likely to be removed because some would be a little too close to the dwelling, but certain ones could be retained. Additional planting would be carried out there. Um, and there are comments in my report from the tree officer. You're obviously likely to hear from him shortly, but uh, there's reference to field maple and other irrelevant trees that could could be uh, placed uh, on, on, on that area as, as better in better space with better specimens rather than the, the very spindly specimens uh, group we have to some extent at the moment. Yeah, I, I would mention uh, a number of people, although there is this informal path that's that's obviously crossed the site, site historically for some time, um, I would wish to make it clear this has not been used as a public space, just for the avoidance of doubt. You know, it, it's a it's a, a pony paddock, unused pony paddock at the moment. That, that's what it's used as been, but albeit, you know, uh, as, as pointed out, uh, there is the uh, pathway across it, which has been accommodated in the scheme. The uh, affordable housing issue was also mentioned and um, I just wish to point out that the, the, the site uh, would include six new affordable dwellings on site um, together with, and that, that results in, we're normally looking policy wise in this circumstance for 35% affordable housing on site. Um, it's often the case that your your 35% can't quite be achieved in whole numbers of dwellings on smaller sites. So it equates to 32%. So in accordance with normal policy under House 1, the additional 3% is covered by that additional uh, £29,000 payment. That is completely consistent with policy. And that's, I think, I think it was the mention of it being derisory in some of the representations, but bear in mind, you're getting here potentially six affordable flats on site uh, four one bed, two two bed, I believe, 
and you're getting an additional contribution for use for affordable housing elsewhere. And we know that quite often in the Weymouth and Portland area, we've, we've often struggled to get affordable housing on site due to viability issues. So this is a scheme where we can actually achieve affordable housing on the site, which uh, I think it is important. It's supported by the Housing Enabling Officer and it was, is also this type of housing discount to market is supported under the current national planning policy framework. Now I think Chairman, that will uh, conclude my, my comments for the moment. Uh, you've others as to hear others to hear from Chairman. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Burden. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Anne Collins. Anne Collins is the area lead major applications West team. Uh, I'd like to invite you to make any comments that you may have at this stage. Thank you, Chair. I've we've only got one comment, um, and that was just in respect that some comments have been made by the um, third parties about uh, contracts of sales and possible agreements between the council. Well, the council may be the landowner, but that is, of course, a completely separate merit to the uh, completely separate issue to consideration as application, which needs to be considered on its own merits or otherwise. Thank you, Chair. OK. Uh, could we now hear from Lara Altry at this stage? Does Lara Altry have any comments to make? Lara? Chairman, Lara Orchie speaking. Um, I probably would only have um, said what Anne has already said, that the fact that uh, the land is owned by Dorset Council um, means it's come to committee for determination, but I've got nothing else to, to add uh, uh, over and above that. OK, thank you very much indeed. Uh, can we now hear from a tree officer? Do we have a tree officer this morning? Do we have Chris Lloyd? Uh, yes, good morning. Sorry, um, I was trying to find the button. <laughs> OK, hello. Good morning, Chris. Uh, good morning. Uh, do you have any comments to make on what you've heard this morning? Um, Would you like I'm, to comment on the trees on, on, on this side? Yes. Um, well, there was a comment arising from one of the letters. Um, I noted that somebody had stated um, that the TPO was imposed to prevent development, um, but that's not the case. TPO is never, never imposed to prevent development. It was just really to ensure that the tree was taken proper consideration of um, in development proposals. Um, I don't know if you want me to talk about the landscape at this moment. But, well, uh, yeah, yes, Mr. Lloyd, I'd, li I'd like you please to talk perhaps about what is, has been described as the cops on site and also about the replanting. And let me have your thoughts on on those, please. Uh, OK, the cops um, is obviously larger than than the portion that will be left behind. Um, so removal of trees on the western side of that um, of that cops area will expose the remaining trees in a way that they've not grown up with, um, which means that they're, they're um, sort of uh, various defects will become um, more critical. So the spindly trees, for instance, you just couldn't really leave them in place. Also, the, the ground itself will become part of a garden, so it turns from being uh, an, a bit of an ecological wildlife area to a more manicured um, setting. So for that reason, really, most of those trees would have to be taken out. Um, there, there are a couple of trees that I would regard as, as sound in the longer term, um, which could remain and form the, the backbone, if you like, of new planting. Um, and the new planting would have to reflect well, that, that more domestic setting. Um, whilst also hopefully adding to or contributing to long term ecological recovery. I think that's it. OK, thank you, Mr Lloyd. 
could we now hear please from a highways officer? Do we have either Colin yeah. Graham or Guy Tetling? Good morning. Colin Graham speaking. Can Hello. you hear me? Good morning, Mr. Graham. Yeah, good morning. Um, yeah, from the highways, uh, I looked at this site on numerous occasions. I am familiar with the area. Whilst I can empathise with concerns expressed by residents and councillors, um, I cannot advise you that this um, application will create severe harm. Therefore, I cannot see a refusal under MPPF guidance. The traffic calming. I can just stop you there, Mr. Yep. Graham. Can you put your video on if possible? Do you know how to do that? Yep, there we go. Sorry. <laughs> yep, that's on. Can you see me? Thank you. Yes, indeed. Please proceed. Yeah, OK. Um, yeah, I'm very familiar with the area and I was involved initially with uh, traffic calming when I was in my years at Weymouth and Portland Borough Council as senior highways engineer. And um, the when the site first came to me, I it was proposed without turning onto Spa Road. And whilst that is legally allowed because it's an unclassified road and doesn't as such need off street turning, I didn't agree with that. And I've now that I'm pleased to see that is in the plans. I did get that. And with regards to uh, Roman Road, that is also an unclassified road. The houses on there have turning effectively from their driveways into the unclassified road. Um, and there is a turning head down the end at the moment in Roman Road. There's not currently a turning head. Um, it may be subjective. It always looked like it was ready to be extended. Therefore, a turning hadn't, hadn't been built at that stage, but that's subject, subjection. Um, the route is well connected to other surrounding networks. Therefore, it's just, when the traffic leaves the, uh, if the traffic were to be leaving Roman Road, as soon as it goes onto Eisen Road, it can bifurcate. And then from each junction in turn, it bifurcates bifurcates and rapidly disseminates into the surrounding network. Um, so again, coming back to it, I cannot make any other comment other than what I advised. This was one support with conditions. Thank you. OK, thank you very much indeed for your uh, comments, uh, Mr. Graham. That is very good. Uh, what I'm going to suggest now is that we're going to have a three three minute comfort break and we're going to convene at probably about a minute past 11 uh, starting with councillor nick arland so we're going to convene about 11.01 thank you Bob, if you're there, can you just unshare and I'll put a note up that we're just taking a sorry. couple of minutes break. Sorry, yeah, I've just. Sorry. Yeah, I've, I've got a little thing I can pop up so anyone coming in knows. Yeah, OK, Thanks. that's right. Yeah, I'll just cool. take my break. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, you need to unshare though. I think, or oh, can I do it?
Right, I've now reconvened the meeting of the Western Southern Area Planning Committee and I would firstly like to hear from Councillor Nick Arland. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I've got two pages of notes, so I hope there's some structure to this. Um, some of them are comments, some of them, there are questions in there, so I'll, I'll try and make it coherent. So um, on page 19 of our agenda on in this report, um, I note that on in section 8.0, we have um, but adjacent in italics, and I'll come back to that later, but I, I feel that's um, an attempt to try and lead the members of this committee. Uh, I'll, I'll come back to that later, but it also mentions that it's an SSI impact risk zone, and it also mentions that we're in a conservation area. And if we fast forward to page uh, 21, where we've got uh, comments by the conservation officer, I note in the report that um, it says, basically his, his latest um, comments have been largely addressed, but we haven't actually been told what Hasn't, hasn't been addressed, so I'd like to know the answer to that. There's a, there's a whole list on page 21, so which bits of those aren't in the final scheme. Um, I also note that um, on the housing enabling comment on page 22, um, there's 1,800 people in the register, and I note that there's six flats on this on this development, and I, I, I know national policy calls discount affordable, but you know, we have a quote in there that says low cost. I would query that. Now, 30 percent off a very large amount of money is not low cost. And I, I, I do wonder how much six houses is going to impact on the 1800 people on the register. I suspect nobody on the register will actually be be able to avail of these six houses. So that's another comment. Um, but I want to move forward to page 29, which is um, if I scroll my screen. Sorry, I've got two screens up here. Well, we did talk about SUS2. So um, as been mentioned by many of the people in the comments, it's not inside the development boundary, it's outside. You're either in or out, it's binary, uh, which is why I have some, some objection to the use of your adjacent in comments. Again, it says immediately adjacent to. It's either in or it's out. And I haven't heard anything to say that we should give extra weight because it's close. Um, so I have a big problem with that. It, it's, it just fails us too in that it's not inside the development boundary. It's not in the local plan. I've looked at the MP squared F 118 condition. I didn't see anything in there that says we should approve this because we're a local authority and we have a right uh, a need to. 119 mentions that um, local authorities should try and build, bring forward suitable sites, including brownfield or held in public ownership, which may be suitable. And I think may is the crucial thing here. Um, it's for us to decide whether they're suitable. Um, I'm not going to try and second guess what Weymouth and Portland Borough Council were doing. Um, they brought it forward. It's now under our ownership and it's under our stewardship and it's just for us to decide what we should be doing with it, taking into account planning policies. Uh, I think we need to look very carefully at whether this does actually meet us too. And I know we have a five, we don't have a five year supply. It's 4.83 and there's a, there's a whole spiel on page 29 and 30. But in the end, it's down to us to decide what weight we give it. It's, it's not a given deal just because we don't have a housing supply that we should approve this. We should give that weight, but we should also give weight to us too. And in, in my opinion, I don't think we should be approving housing on this little basis. It's a little green lung of land. It doesn't meet our climate change agenda. I know that wasn't existent in Weymouth and Portland's um, plans, but it is now. I don't see how that that meets what our aspirations are for, for green space. It's been pointed out that this wasn't a public um, green space. It was used as a paddock. However, there is a footpath through it and it is green space and it has been enjoyed by many for many years. And I don't see the very small development here is going to achieve anything. Um, so that's, that's the end of my comments, really. Thank you, Councillor Ireland. Uh, Chairman, Chairman Bob what, what I'd like to what I'd like to do is I'd like to hear now in respect of those comments from the case officer, uh, Mr. Burden, and then from Anne Collins. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Case officer Bob Burden here. Thank you. Uh, Chairman, uh, uh, can you put your video on, please, Mr. Yes, sorry, Chairman. I'm not actually seeing you. Yep, sorry about that. Um, yes, Councillor Ireland referred to my use of adjacent in italics in the uh, in part of the report, referring to adjacent to the d defined development boundary. Um, I wasn't uh, intending to in any way, I can assure you, 
lead member. I was just just it's just a way of of drawing attention to that. It's 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 not a long way from the defined development boundary, which would normally um, you know, if it was a long way outside the divine development boundary, that would raise all sorts of questions about perhaps the impact on the open countryside, lack of ready accessibility to public transport services and facilities, etc. But just by I'm just making the point basically that uh, since it's uh, physically adjacent to the de development boundary, you know, we we that that means that there is potential in terms of sustainability. Uh, uh, attributes that the site has, which I've already outlined. Uh, he also mentioned um, uh, the, the conservation officer's comments and um, what, what wasn't agreed with the conservation officer. Uh, I have to admit, I don't have a long list to hand of those, but I can, I can tell you that when the, um, the, the latest list of amended plans, which I just shown you, um, that incorporates, I would honestly say about 90 to 95 percent of all the little design attributes and characteristics that the conservation officer sought. Um, I gave the full list of, of, of points that the conservation officer would have liked to see incorporated to the applicant and they responded with nearly all of those being included. So we were, we were only talking, we were down to fine points of design and the, the things we have got in there, as I've mentioned, uh, tile cladding, feature scallop roof tile areas, tile hung bay window projections, projecting virgin eaves details, exposed timber sections, chimneys, decorative brickwork, etc. So, I mean, there's a lot in there, but uh, apologies that I can't give you the, the precise like 5% that aren't in there, but it was it was overwhelmingly, um, you know, helping we, me with um, that that's uh, concern of the conservation officer, just to clarify that point. Um, Councillor Ireland mentioned the the six flats, the affordable housing six flats. Um, and yes, so they're a discount to market at 70% of normal market price. Um, you know, I've discussed this application and that particular uh, form of, of, of tenure with the. Uh, sorry, can you hear me, Chairman? I can hear you, Bob. I can I can hear you, Mr. Burden. Uh, we seem to have lost Mr. Burden. Can we hear now from Anne Collins? Thank you, Chair. Yes, I think Bob Burden was going to go on to say that he'd obviously um, discussed the tenure with our affordable housing team leader, and he was um, happy with that proposal. It does meet government guidance and the definitions stated in the MPPF. Um, I suppose the only other points I'd pick up on is, yes, this obviously is a, a green space, whether it's in use by the public or not, and obviously has this kind of informal public footpath going through it. Um, the proposals obviously seek to retain that footpath going through it, and that would be secured via conditions in the Section 106 agreement. Um, unfortunately, obviously, if we are going to meet our five year land supply um, housing needs, green spaces do end up being built on. It's obviously just a question of whether this is the appropriate site. Um, you know, the guidance in the MPPF is quite clear that where our local plan policies on housing are out of date, i.e. we don't have a five year land supply, um, then we should be approving applications unless there's a clear reason for not doing so. If, I can, the, um, if I can just stop you there. Yeah. I've heard from Councillor Ireland on the basis of what you've heard from Councillor Ireland. Are there any material reasons, any material planning reasons why Mr Burden's conclusion is not correct? I don't believe there is, Chairman. I agree with Mr Burden's recommendation. Right. OK, uh, thank you. Anne. Uh, I, I, Chairman, I'm back. You're, you're back. back. Uh, if you would like to conclude and then yeah. we will hear from Councillor Dunseith. Yeah. Sorry about that, completely beyond my control. Thank you. Do, do continue. Yes, I was just going to say uh, briefly on the affordable housing. Um, the housing enabling team leader, uh, I appreciate uh, Councillor Ireland's comments questioning whether or not that, that that's a, a viable uh, 
type of affordable housing but I can only say that the housing team leader was very supportive of of this particular development and was pleased that it included the smaller flats one and two bed units so that's, that's for members to consider obviously um, yes yeah, obviously for, for members it, it's for members to consider their own view as regards the, the significance of this piece of land in, in its current state as a, an open space within the conservation area I, I can't really say much more than that on that point. I, I've, I've made my points over the uh, the case for development of, of that. Uh, uh, Councillor Ireland also referred to policy SUS2 and it being outside the development boundary, but you know, I, I just would have to bring you back to the fact that um, you know, we are required uh, under the NPF paragraph 11 to in the situation where housing uh, land supply is in shortfall um, to look at where in a situation where the relevant policies are out of date planning commission should be granted unless any, any adverse impacts of doing so would significantly and demonstrably outweigh the benefits when assessed against the policies of the framework as a whole so uh, clearly it's for members to to consider that and that was all i wanted to say further on that chairman thank you uh, thank you very much, Mr. Burden. Uh, we will now hear from Councillor Jean Dunseith, uh, and I would just say that uh, you, you are perfectly entitled to ask questions, and you are also able to make comments. So do make comments as well as question if you have them. Thank you, Chairman. Um, this site is shoehorned in. If you looked at a map of Weymouth, this is not a site that you would logically choose to build on. It's an awkward shape and it is divided into two sections. It is in the conservation area, although I do understand it's separated by Weymouth Way. I do have particular concerns about the entrance and exits of Spa Road. We've been shown it's on the brow of a hill. There are raised platforms there. There is traffic calming. The slope goes down and the road narrows. And yet we're being asked to, to look at the, the prospect of five houses with their um, entrances onto Spa Road in this exact same spot with traffic coming up from Radipole going up the hill and basically accelerating having to dodge people waiting the other side and five uh, residents ex uh, drives that that could be exiting on to this road at the same time. I, I don't think that is very sensible at all. I think we need to conserve these green lungs. I think uh, one of the previous um, objectors did mention COVID-19 and how important it is, not just during COVID-19, but for residents, children, to be able to step into green areas, to have that little bit of freedom where, where they can be one with nature. And if this small area, a pony paddock, as we are told, is taken away, where do they go? What do they have? They would have a path through, that's granted. Um, but again, it's taking away quite a valuable green lung. A gas pipeline is mentioned in the notes, some, some mention of a gas pipeline. And I just wondered where this was in relation to this site. Is it um, a ga gas mains pipe that goes down Spa Road as it does down most a lot of residential roads? Or is it something else that we need to be concerned about? And the intermediate housing discounts. If I have this right, if if a flat costs £100,000, then this discount 
would mean that residents would be asked to pay £70,000 and not that the full price. And then when they sold, this, this would again, this 30% would be deducted. I just wonder if, if I really have the full details of that. Um, let me just see. I am a little bit concerned. We only have six so-called affordable houses here. And I, I am a little concerned that none of them are for rent. But again, I am concerned of the green lung, the green space. I think if nature teaches us anything, it's the fact that we need to be able to reach out each of us mentally, physically. It, it has a great bearing on us. This is not a huge site. It's not as though we're suddenly going to lose 700 houses. We're talking about 19. So I would prefer it to stay as a green lung for use by residents and visitors. To sum up, I'm very, very concerned about the spa road. I think that could be dangerous. Thank you, Chairman. Thank, thank you, Councillor Dunseith. Uh, we will next hear from the sure, highways sure. officer, Mr. Graham. Can we hear from the highways officer, Mr. Graham, please? And then we will hear from Mr. Burden. We'll have the highways officer, uh, Mr. Graham, then we'll hear from Mr. Burden. Uh, Mr. Graham, would you like to comment on what you have heard from uh, Councillor Dunseith? That was predominantly about Spa Road, concern on to Spa Road access, wasn't it? Uh, the Spa Road access, yeah, I've been out there, looked at it, and on numerous occasions, uh, I do make a point of travelling past and through sites um, on my normal routine site visits and also out of hours to see unusual times, including during lockdown at the moment, um, I'm allowed to travel. And also one gets a clearer picture of how much parking actually occurs because not so many people can go out. With Spa Road, say it is 30 miles an hour, it does have traffic calming on it. Um, I put to you the situation that there's um, on Spa Road and also Ison Road and Roman Road, there are no recorded injury accidents in five years that I have uh, sight of on our upstate system. Um, as such, if you were to come up Spa Road, as I did the other day, when you go towards Dorchester Road and you summit the, the, the sort of uh, the gradual crest of the hill there, it's no different to the situation as you come up on the first houses on your left after this plot where you have driveways that people currently have, presumably have to reverse in and out of and you've got the houses the other side of the road. So I don't see this is going to result in an increase in accidents. There's uh, potentially an increased risk, but uh, the hazard isn't that, isn't that isn't that great? And I say they all have turning areas within their frontage. Um, also, as you come down past Radipole Lane at the bottom there of the hill, your visibility is a restriction on the side, which it's in excess of the 43 metres required for manual for streets for a 30 mile an hour road such as this, but it does help to um, keep your speed down. And also then you have the pinch point as well, which also puts you onto your side of the road as long with the speed as along with the speed cushions as well. So I couldn't recommend refusal on the highway safety grounds. Thank you, Chair. OK, thank you, Mr Graham. If we can now hear from Mr Burden. Yes, thank you, Chairman. To the comments from Councillor Dunseith. Yes, yeah. Yeah, Councillor Dunseith um, made reference to the gas pipeline and we were required to consult the um, SGN Gas Networks Limited because uh, the site lies within a consultation zone for the nearby gas mains pipeline. So the, uh, I can confirm that the, the gas pipeline does not cross the site. It's in the locality, but they had no objections to it when consulted, Chairman. 
Um, that was one point. Um, secondly, uh, Councillor Dunseith raised the, the query just about the affordable housing, the discount to market. And uh, she was right when she said if, if a property on the open market was uh, 100,000, then in this case it would be reduced to 70,000 the price. And I would also confirm that yes, that reduction of 30% discount to market would be continued because it would be enshrined within the section 106 requirement, Chairman. And uh, that, that was it. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you. Uh, can we now have Anne Collins in relation? Can we have Anne Collins, the area lead major applications West team? Can we have Anne? Yes, Collins, Chairman. Please? Chairman, uh, I've got I've got nothing further to add at this stage unless you have a particular well, question. Yeah, yes, indeed. Uh, this may be a question for you or it may be a question for Lara, uh, the legal officer. Uh, we did hear about the discount to market value in relation to the uh, affordables. And my recollection is that we have recently seen this in relation to a property at Crossways, a site at Crossways. We so have we changed. Have precedent for this and it is enshrined in the new NPPF. Yeah. Yes, you're right, Chair. I think, believe it was a February committee where we considered a proposal for the same type of um, affordable housing in Crossways and it was approved by committee. And I'm going to ask you uh, in relation to what you've heard from uh, Councillor Jean Dunsty, there was nothing in there that indicates that, that there are any material planning reasons why Mr Burden isn't correct in his conclusions. No, nothing, there wasn't. Nothing no, there wasn't, Chairman, with, in my view. Uh, Councillor Dunsey. Right. Okay. We will now move on and we will hear please from uh, Councillor Clayton. If you have any questions and indeed any comments you can make. Hello, good morning, uh, Councillor. Thank you, Chair. Um, I would like to echo, I think, Councillor Ireland's comments. Um, this is outside the defined development boundary and SUS2 of the local plan says development there should be strictly controlled. Now it seems to me the main reason to approve it would be the shortage of the five-year housing land supply, but which the report it says acknowledges um, is only modestly below, so that weakens SUS2. Now I note that 11 of the 13 houses are four bedrooms. Is there any evidence of need of four bedroomed houses in the Weymouth area? Do you have any other comments or questions to make? That's my main comment. OK, I would like to hear from the legal officer. Can we hear from Lara Altry? Hello, Chairman. It's Lara Altry here. Now, I, I have a question for you is that you have heard the comments of Councillor Clayton. Yes. Are there any reasons why, is there any reason why this uh, application shouldn't follow per uh, Mr Burden's recommendation? on the basis of what you've heard and specifically read the comment of the four bedroom houses? Um, not in my opinion, no. Uh, Chair Chairman, could I, Bob Burden, could I comment? Yes, case officer? please. Can we hear from Just Councillor Burden? Uh, can we hear from Mr Burden, the case officer? Thank you, Chairman. Just on that point, just, um, I mean, yeah, we've got a number of four bed houses, but we have to put it in the context of the mix of the overall development on this site. So we have six flats, four one beds, two times two beds, two times three bed semi-detached, four times four bed semi-detached and seven times four bed detached. So, so although there's a number of four beds, they are split between semis and detached. So there is a sort of bit more of a sort of mix of types. It, it's not too skewed in terms of them all being detached, for example. Just just to point that out, Chairman, as, as to give you the context of the mix of dwellings and sizes. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr Burden. Uh, can we hear now from Anne Collins, please? 
Can we hear from Anne Collins? Do you have any comments on what was made by Councillor Clayton? No, I don't have anything further to add, Chairman. Right. Uh, can we now hear, please, from Councillor Barrow? I believe you wanted to speak, Councillor Barrow. Yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, just some comment, uh, comments and then one question. Uh, we have a plan led planning process and we've been used to being guided by plans and policies. In this case, we have been asked to disregard various plans and policies. We have been asked to approve a site that is not in the local plan. That was identified as unsuitable for housing in the strategic housing land availability assessment. Is outside the DDB. I understand the adjacent argument, but this is in effect an argument for continuous expansion. And also, lastly, we've asked, been asked to approve a site that's in a conservation area. Well, I do understand the Weymouth Way uh, comments. This is a lot of plans and policies to be disregarding in some way. On the plus side, the provision of affordable housing is to be welcomed, but I do worry that Nick Island is right when he says it will probably not reduce our waiting list. And also the work to design the new houses in line with the other houses in Spire Road is to be welcomed. The question is, uh, is in the strategic housing land availability assessment. The reason for the site being excluded, and that's on our on Dorset Council's website at the moment, is the southern site comprises significant tree planting, which is important in the setting of the town and conservation area. Unacceptable impacts on townscape character. So the question is, why is that now considered uh, not such a relevant comment as it was perhaps before? Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Councillor Barrow. Uh, I'd invite Ms. Mr. Burden uh, to answer points that have been raised by Councillor Barrow. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Chairman, for, for that. Yeah, in terms of the, uh, I, I, I don't have detailed knowledge of the strategic housing land assessment uh, generally, but I, I can say in terms of with this application coming in in relatively recent times, the issue of any planting on the site the landscaping was discussed in detail with the landscape officer. And their view, uh, but I discussed it both with landscape officers and with um, and Chris Lloyd, as you know, has been to the, the site who you've heard from earlier today. Um, whilst you know, the, there is tree planting there, particularly that, that copse. When you look at it in detail, you know, it, it doesn't stand up well to be in terms of being it. It's being a high quality area of planting. So that's that's a, a material factor which I think you should uh, bear in mind when you're weighing this this application up in terms of it, it, its merits, Chairman. That's that's all I, I wish to say. I don't know if. Uh, any other officer wishes to comment further on that, but um, that, that's my contribution on, on that, Chairman. Uh, Anne, Anne Collins, would you like to make a comment uh, or indeed uh, Laura Oldry, the solicitor? Would either of you like to make a comment in respect Chair, of what you've heard from uh, Councillor Barrow? Yeah, Chair, I've got nothing further to add. I think Bob's obviously responded to that point. Yes, and uh, Laura, do you have anything to add? No, no, Chairman, nothing further to add. OK, uh, we will now hear from uh, Councillor Sue Cocking. Hello, Chair. Um, it's just um, a few questions, really. Um, I'll just pick up first on what um, Bob said about the COPs. Could I just ask in percentage wise how much of the COPs would be left? Because from your last comment, it sounds that very little would be left of that COPS. I know that's been mentioned quite a few times about their spindly trees, but the more this meeting's going on, I can see less and less of this COPS being left. So I would like to know how much of the COPS has been, is going to be left um, in terms of the, that corner of the site. Um, and also the, the, the tree bank from Weymouth Way, one of your comments was from Bob Burden, the planning officer. He said none of the trees should 
be removed. It, could that be confirmed? And how wide is that tree bank? Um, because that will act as a really important buffer zone for the houses. So I just want you to know how wide the tree bank is going to be left. And are, is it guaranteed that none of those trees would be removed? And then what is the distance from Weymouth Way to the first house on the housing site? So those are my questions, Chair. Uh, thank you, Councillor Cocking. Could we hear now from Mr Lloyd? The tree officer, Mr Lloyd. Yep, um, I'm here, Chair. Uh, Mr Mr Lloyd, uh, would you like to comment a bit more about the the trees within the cots <clears throat> and indeed uh, what or whether any significant substantial mature trees would would be lost um the last house on that southeast corner more or less is entirely within the cops area so there is a large proportion of the existing cops that would disappear um, there is one particular sycamore in the sort of south eastern corner of that copse that would remain um, and a couple of other smaller trees which are probably not really well you wouldn't notice them from the streets at the moment because of the surrounding vegetation um, which would also remain so what would actually be be lost in terms of trees in terms of significant trees um as you drive up um from well towards spa road um coming up that hill um more or less everything you see on that that hey, what, what i'm asking mr lloyd is we've heard mention of spindly trees mm. what significance would be lost the the cops as it stands um doesn't register as individual trees it registers as a copse of and um especially when it's in leaf you don't really notice the um the form of the individual trees so most of that would be lost on on the on that boundary um what you're left with at the top is literally the last sort of um i suppose 15 20 meters of cops area with much of that having to be taken out because of the um the poor condition of individual yes the um trees I within you spend your working life dealing with trees is this a significant loss it's Would a total this be a significant loss uh well it's a total change of character but in 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 the scheme of trees in the it, within dorset is this a significant loss <laughs> i don't think we can take the whole of dorset into consideration when we're looking at a um specific location like that um in that locality it's a complete change of character and how, how many trees are, uh, would you say are contained within the cops my understanding that a cops of wood could comprise of as few as five trees how, how many significant trees are we talking about uh the cops is made up of i suppose in a, between 40 and 60 trees um when you think of it in terms of tree species but uh the cops has been wind pruned so at the far western edge of that or southwestern edge of that they're quite small and then they um, are sculpted by the wind up to the more mature well the more significant trees in, in your terms um in the far sort of south eastern corner of the cops um you're probably well what would be left before replanting would probably be around three of those trees in the south southeast south eastern corner and they would be substantial trees um they'd be trees that you notice as decent trees decent trees right uh, thank you very much for answering my questions i do see that other members are out commenting on uh they would like to know how the details of the trees taken down Thank you very much, Mr. Lloyd. OK, thank you, Chair. Uh, can we now hear again from Councillor Ireland? Uh, um, Chairman, Chairman, yes. can I just, sorry, can I yes, just... Um, we'll hear from 
just just to, and then councillor Ireland. yeah chairman just just to come back on um uh, councillor cocking's point i uh, just to confirm that the that the um distance from the road to the nearest dwelling is uh, 46 meters chairman uh, she asked for the distance of that and can i also confirm um she raised the query about whether all the trees on the embankment would be retained. Uh, uh, to the best of my knowledge, they would be because they're all on council owned land, which is part of the strategic landscaping and ownership of the, the, the cutting, flanking Weymouth Way chairman. That was all I wanted to say. Right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Burden. Uh, Councillor Ireland. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, I did miss one question out. So um, I noticed that Natural England had objected and as far as I can see, they still object because the biodiversity hasn't been met. Um, so I'd like confirmation on that. But I'd, going back to SUS2, um, in 16.2 on the report, it says that you know basically development outside development boundaries will be strictly controlled and limited to exceptions. And I, I don't see how this meets any of the ex exceptions. I know it includes affordable housing, but it's predominantly open market and the affordable housing is discount open market. So that's open market in my view as well. Um, so I would like to propose that we reject it on the basis that SUS2 trumps our need for housing supply. Uh, can we hear from Mr Burden? Yes, thank you, Chairman. Uh, on Councillor Ryan's point about Natural England's objection, that was in the early days before we'd resolved the biodiversity mitigation plan and Natural England were satisfied with the proposal providing we reached agreement with the natural environment team on an acceptable biodiversity mitigation plan and that has been achieved chairman uh can we now hear from Anne collins uh, do you have any particular comment any comments that you'd like to make on what you've heard from councillor ireland uh, there's Check. mention of sustainability yeah, I mean, Chair, we've already talked about sort of sustainability and the fact that, you know, officers could this to be a sustainable site on the edge of Weymouth, um, well, in Weymouth, really, with good access to local facilities, shops, etc. Um, obviously, if members are minded to look at uh, policy SUS2 and the fact that it's outside of GDB, um, you need to be very clear about what actual harm its location outside of a defined development boundary actually causes. Thank you, Chair. Um, and would you say there would be a material planning reason why Mr Burden's conclusion isn't correct on, on the basis of that? No, I still Just agree with Mr Burden. The, the idea that uh, Councillor Burden's conclusion is correct. Yes, and I still agree with within this that uh, means that there are pl material planning reasons why this shouldn't be approved. No, I still comfortable. I still feel comfortable with the recommendation okay. and the, the benefits okay. outweigh it. Yeah, I'm very uh, conscious that there are councillors who haven't spoken, uh, and I understand David Shortell would like to speak. Can we hear from David Shortell? Hello, David. Uh, I can see you, but I cannot hear you. I cannot hear you. Can you unmute? I still can't hear you. If you can use your unmute button. Can you hear me? Can you? Oh, yes, yes, that's it. Can, can I can you hear you? All right, okay. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Okay, um, in addition to, again, my concerns, as with the other councillors, are uh, that it's uh, within the uh, Radapole conservation area and, of course, outside the strategic housing uh, uh, land availability assessment uh, boundary. I have three questions, if I may. Uh, first of all, uh, can I ask the uh, planning officer whether a full wildlife uh, and reptile survey was carried out and what the results were? Also, was consideration given to the uh, the comment about the area being of archaeologi ar ar archaeological potential. Can I have the? Can I ask the highways officer 
whether the Roman road extension through the, uh, through the development will be adopted by Dorset Highways. And finally, uh, Chairman, I'd like to ask the question, the mitigation they say is either 29, 27, I mean, the, con um, the consideration is either 29, 27,000. I just want to know which is which. And I understand, according to the report, that there is in fact a 35% discount for affordable housing and not 30 as mentioned previously. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Shortel. Uh, Mr Burden, would you like to comment on points raised by Councillor Shortel? Yes, thank you, Chairman, I will. Um, yeah, as regards a reptile survey, yes, I can confirm relevant surveys were counted, uh, carried out and reptiles were indeed discovered. Um, and arrangements would be made for those to be translocated, uh, particularly slow worms, which were found on the site. So that was, uh, uh, hopefully that, that addresses the point uh, raised by Councillor Shortell on, on that. Um, Archaeology, uh, just, just for, uh, further on that point, uh, obviously one of the planning conditions refers to the implementation of the bio biodiversity mitigation plan, and that includes details of the relocation of, of reptiles, Chairman. Um, archaeology, yes, the site is, is of some archaeological potential and accordingly there is a condition applied for a programme of works to be carried out as, as part of the application if it were approved. Um, also, just to clarify, um, on the affordable housing, there was a query over whether the, the additional payment was 27 or 29,000. It is, as per my report, 29,812 is the uh, 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 off-site uh, financial contribution in relation to affordable housing. And then just to confirm, the discount to market rate is 70% of market rate. Thank you, Chairman. Uh Chairman, may I come back? And there was one other question which hasn't been answered. Uh, yes, Councillor Shortell. That was the question regarding the extension to Roman Road. Uh, yes, Chair, well, I can probably, um, uh, you can obviously go to um, uh, Mr Graham on that, but um, yeah, the, the, the extension to Roman Road, the first section would be adopted, uh, which covers one, two, three, four, five, five houses and then beyond that there would be a, a private driveway extending off that it may be colin graham would wish to comment slightly further on that chairman uh thank you mr burden if we could hear from um mr graham yes hello chairman um yeah i've looked at the application form just to refresh my memory and show, show my facts um the road is being offered for adoption and i did put it in front of neil turner who deals with such highway adoptions and he's amenable to that so it's up to them it's that they their choice thank you uh thank you mr mr graham uh could i ask ann collins do you have any other comments to make uh in relation to this this particular application being outside of the ddb but still within the conservation area I don't chair. I think we've adequately explored them as officers already. Right. Thank you. Uh, do we have anybody else wishing to speak? Councillors? Uh, can we hear from Councillor Nick Ireland? Can I speak with Councillor Ireland, please? Yes, Chairman, I have. Um, I'm somewhat confused on the chat bar because uh, Councillor Clayton is saying I would like to second Councillor Ireland's proposal, but I can't see a proposal from you. Ah, yes, I did I, that at 11.20. You do now. have a proposal. So, right, OK. So what what is your proposal, Councillor Ireland? I re I suggest that we reject the, the officer's um, um, recommendation and on the basis of SUS 2, um, 3, because it doesn't, the only thing it meets and that's more is, is sustainability. It doesn't meet any other criteria and we're going to lose trees and green space. Uh, Anne Collins, would you like to comment on the lack of green space and the points raised by 
Councillor Ireland. Yes, Chair. Um, we've already obviously commented on the fact that it's not a sort of public open space as such. Obviously, it's been used informally over the years and has this informal footpath going over it. Um, officers obviously looked at the impact on the loss of that space and the loss of the trees and concluded that they feel it would have an acceptable impact. Um, so I think if members are reaching a different view, we just need to be clear about the policy on which that is based. Please share. Uh, could I hear now from Lara, the solicitor? Lara Altry. Hello, Chairman. Uh, sorry, I can't see you. I can only hear you. No, my, my video is not working, unfortunately. Okay. Apologies for that. Okay. Uh, I'm going, going to ask. My understanding is that though there might be a footpath through the uh, site, there, there is no, this is, this is not, none of this comprises public ground. Um, that's my understanding, although Mr Burden may be able to clarify that. Uh, Mr Burden, do you have any comments to make? Only that, um, Chairman, yeah, there's, there's no official recognition of this site as any sort of public open space, but all I can say is that it is true to say that the public have been able to cross the site by means of that informal path for for quite some years, but it's not its status is, is as a, a pony paddock. Right, thank you, Mr. Burden. Um, Sue Cocking, would you like to speak? Yeah, just put it all on kit and to fiddle it around. I just wanted to know, would I just put a comment on the chat bar? Would the, would the um the, the tree officer said about the change of character of the loss of the cops or the majority of it would only be three trees remaining out of I think he said between 40 and 60. So could that be um, a material consideration for the refusal of this application? Uh, I'd like to thank thank you, uh, Councillor Cocking. Do, do we have any comments from either Mr Burden, Anne Collins or Lara Altry on that? Uh, Chairman, as case officer, uh, I would comment, yes, um, loss of trees is a material consideration, Chairman, for you to, to weigh in the balance. Uh, Anne Collins. Chair, I think you just need to be clear looking at the policies of the local plan to which policy you'd be um, effectively seeking to retain those trees, i.e. you don't want to see them lost. Um, and on, on the basis of what policy are you seeking to do that, please? Uh, could we hear from the, the legal officer? Chairman Laurel, to hear, I've got nothing further to add to, to what Anne has just said. Right, so Councillor Ireland, um, your, your, your proposal, which is presumably for refusal, uh, would you like to elaborate on which council policies you would include? I'll leave that to uh, Councillor Clayton if, he, if he's willing to chip in. Uh, Councillor Clayton. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I, I, I return to SAS2 that development outside defined development boundary must be strictly controlled. Um, in other words, I see no need for this development to say this. In other words, um, I, if it was purely uh, affordable housing, if we were using our own council land to build social housing, I may be inclined to support this. So that to me would be a reason to overrule outside defined development boundaries. But to build predominantly four bedroomed houses, I don't see as a significant reason to overrule uh, the requirement to strictly control development outside divine development boundary, if that makes sense. I think the question is, are there any material planning reasons why this application should not be passed? Why are there any material planning reasons? That is what you would have to state. 
i.e. there is a presumption in favour of sustainable development. What material planning reasons are there for refusal? Well, someone's going to have to help me out here because my gut feeling is I want to reject it. I want to reject it because the council's uh, claim uh, has passed a climate emergency, which to me enhances SUS2, not erodes it. Um, I haven't got the legal training to say material considerations in this respect, other than because we've declared a climate emergency and because of SUS2, I feel that we ought to reject it. Can we can we hear from the case officer? Chairman, uh, it's Nick Ireland again. Yes. I, I just, there's, there's a policy called the MV2. I'm sorry, just scrolling through the local plan. Yes. And uh, item five says proposals that would result in the loss of or deterioration of irreplaceable habitats, such as woodlands, veteran trees, will be refused unless the need and public benefits from the development clearly outweigh the loss. So, bottom line is we're going to lose a load of trees. We're going to lose some green space, and I don't think the benefits outweigh that. Do we have any other members wishing to speak? Uh, Mr Burden, I'm going to ask you a, a, a question in relation to the five year land supply. Yes, Chairman. Uh, we, we do not have a five year land supply. We do not have a five year land supply Chairman, it's at 4.83 years and those figures are pretty current because they came out in an April report. And in relation to the number of people on the housing list, uh, the housing register, you have made reference to that in your report? I have, uh, yes, I have made reference to it in uh, the sense that the obviously the uh, housing enabling team leader has, has set out the context, the wider context. Uh, so he's gone from the, the, the general need issues of affordable housing, moving down to the details of the, uh, the site specifics of this proposal, Chairman. And how recently did you obtain that information from the uh, officer concerned? Um, fairly recently, uh, Chairman, I would say in that sort of March time, because uh, we'd had the application some time and I went back to check with the uh, housing enabling officer that the figures were up to date. Thank you. Uh, at this stage, I'm going to put forward a proposal for approval. I don't know if there, if there are any other councillors who would wish to second that proposal. Do we have anybody who would wish to second that proposal? Do we have a seconder? We don't have a seconder. Right, so back to Councillor Nick Ireland. OK, Nick, so uh, you have uh, made mention uh, of ENV2, I believe. Uh, so I think ENV2 part five is applicable and also on conservation areas because this is in a conservation area. We have 2.3.10 in local plan, which mentions okay. the lopping, felling of trees. And basically, it'll we should be avoiding the loss of buildings and features, and this is a feature which make a positive contribution to the character or appearance of an area. Uh, Sue Cocking, do you have anything to add? No, I was, I, was, I was just trying to look up some, some material considerations, but I can't find, um, but I agree with um, Councillor Islands. Um, so you, you, you would like to see specific mention of the loss of part of the COPS? Yeah, yeah, I definitely that is my that is a big material uh, material consideration for refusal. The loss of the cops, it's from 40 to 60 trees down to three and it will change the character 
of the street thing. Uh, and as a, as, a, as a council, we declared a climate emergency and the loss of many trees is not in keeping with what the council declared. Right. Uh, Anne Collins. Are you there, Anne? Do we have sorry. Anne Collins? Yes, sorry, I was just unmuting myself, Chair. Yes, um, I've heard more now in respect of policy SUS2, policy um, ENV2 and policy ENV4. Um, it is, I have more understanding now of what members are concerned about in terms of this loss of this COPS. Um, do you wish to take the adjournment, Chair, for officers to consider it? Um, yes. Uh, I put forward a proposal for approval. We don't appear to have a, a seconder. So at this stage, I think we adjourn. Yes, Chair, can I suggest we perhaps did, um, adjourn for 10 minutes just so officers can put together a reason for members to come back and consider? Yes, Anne, thank you. Chairman, can I, uh, can I make some suggestions, please? Uh, Councillor Shortell. Uh, thank you, Chairman. As the couple of points I've come up on my list, uh, it's uh, uh, material considerations, and one of which is effect on listed buildings, of course, and conservation areas. And of course, there's nature conservations to be considered as well. So those are two points which are perhaps on my list of material considerations, which ought to be taken in mind. Uh, thank you. Have you heard that, uh, Anne Collins? I have chair. The only okay, point. Thank you. Yep. Uh, we'll hear from Councillor Sarah Williams. Would you like to speak, Sarah? Yeah, my comments just been made by David, and that's the change of the character of a conservation um, area. Uh, this includes, um, as Nick said, the tree trees and cops. Uh, this is why I think this. This um, should be rejected. This application should be rejected. OK, thank you. So uh, we now adjourn. Unless anybody, anyone else wishes to speak. This meeting is now adjourned.
Chair, there is a message from uh, Anne Collins for you. Yeah, fine. Uh, we are likely to proceed uh, with this session beyond half past 12. Uh, can I just take it that everybody is happy that we continue past the three hour limit? If you're not happy, uh, do send me a note on the chat bar and we will consider matters. Right, so we have a proposal for refusal by Councillor Ireland as proposer and a seconder is Councillor Clayton. And I think, Chair, on the chat bar, I need to formally do that so it's recorded, not just in the chat bar. Yes, not just in the chat bar. So if we can hear from Councillor Ireland, just to confirm you are proposing refusal. Yes, Chairman, I am proposing refusal. Uh, the reasons already stated. Right. Would you just like to outline those reasons again? OK, um, I, th I thought Anne was going to come up with some text. OK, so, um, it fails us two on balance. It fails N4 because of the loss of green space and trees. Uh, and Anne Collins. <sighs> Before we yes. hear from, before we hear from Anne Collins, uh, I would just like to, uh, for the record, state that Councillor Louis O'Leary has just left the meeting. Uh, Anne Collins. Thank you, Chair. Yes, based on what I've heard from members um, this morning in respect of a proposal and seconder for, for refusal, I've come up with a reason for refusal based on the policies they've referred to. If you'd like me to read it out now, Chair. Uh, in the first instance, yes. The site is outside of the defined development boundary and the development is therefore contrary to policy SUS2 of the West Dorset and Weymouth Local Plan 2015. The site is a currently undeveloped green space with a copse and is within the conservation area. The site is considered to make a positive contribution to the character of the conservation area by virtue of its openness, trees and cops, and the development would neither preserve or enhance the character of the conservation area, contrary to policies EMV2 and EMV4 of the local plan and the MPPF. Chair, may I also add that if members are looking to recommend the application for refusal, um, obviously, Bob's recommendation was based on the completion of a Section 106 agreement, and that wouldn't have happened if the um, application is refused. So we would, as officers, look for a second reason for refusal relating to the lack of a Section 106, and that would be in the absence of a completed planning obligation, the scheme would not ensure the affordable housing and affordable housing financial contribution are provided nor the ecological financial contribution and nor the replacement public public footpath and its provision and maintenance. As such, the development is contrary to policies House 2, EMV2 and EMV11 of the local plan and the MPPF. Thank you very much, Anne. Uh, could we now hear from Councillor uh, Clayton? Well, I, I formally um, second. Do you, have anything, do you have any other reasons that you would add to what you have heard from um, yeah, um, yeah, firstly yeah, Councillor yeah. Ireland and the words of uh, Councillor Anne Collins? The only reason I think I would add to that, Chair, is that I think us declaring a climate emergency is a material consideration and that just enhances uh, policies like SUS2 gives them more weight. Uh, Anne Collins, would you like to comment further? Chair, I could amend the beginning of the reason to be the site outside of the defined development boundary and Dorset Council had declared a climate emergency. As such, the development is therefore contrary to policy SUS2 of the local plan. Uh, Councillor Ireland, are you happy for, with what you've heard? Is that what you're meaning? Uh, very much so, thank you, Anne. 
Right. So we have a proposer in the form of Councillor Ireland and a seconder in the form of Councillor Clayton. So I will now go down the list of those who are voting. Uh, Councillor Barrow, I believe, is not participating in the vote. Uh, Councillor Clayton, you're going to vote for refusal. I take it. Uh, Correct, Chair. Yeah. Su Councillor Susan Cocking. Yes, I'm voting for refusal. Uh, Councillor Dunseith. I'm voting for refusal. Uh, David Gray, I believe, is not participating. Uh, Nick Ireland. Voting for refusal. Refusal. Uh, Councillor Louis O'Leary has left the meeting. Councillor David Shortell. Chairman, I'm voting for refusal. Uh, Councillor Sarah Williams. I'm voting for refusal. Uh, Councillor Kate Weller. Um, Chairman, you're it's, not. You're not. It's, I'm, I'm not voting. You're not participating. Chairman, it's Denise. Could I, I, I ju I'd just like to confirm that David Gray, Louis O'Leary and Kate Weller were not participating in this Indeed, vote. Entirely um, correct. Could I just clarify whether um, Peter Barrow, the situation with Peter Barrow, please? Chairman, can you hear me? Yes, 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 Peter. Yes, I, I raised the... A declaration at, at the beginning because I'd made previous statements about this uh, and I think just to avoid any chance of being accused of doing anything that's untoward uh, I'll abstain. Yes. Uh, I, I'm not going to support this um, proposal for refusal uh, so that concludes the voting and this application has been refused by the committee. Thank you everyone. So we now move on to the next application which is ap application WDD 19 2865 land adjacent to Potton Lane Chickerel, erection of seven dwellings and the case officer is Emma Telford. I'm back chairman just to confirm. Uh, do we have uh, Denise to confirm that you've captured the fact that David Gray has returned to the committee? Uh, yes, Chairman. Um, also, um, Councillor Kate Weller um, yes. should return. Um, Councillor Louis O'Leary has left the meeting, but he yes. wasn't participating yes. in the last application anyway. Right. Thank you, Denise. Uh, can we now hear from Emma, please? Hello, good afternoon, Emma. Thank you, Chair. Um, can I just check that you can see my presentation? Uh, certainly can see you. Um, I, I haven't got it across yet, Emma. OK. Um, Is that sharing it now? Uh, yes. Yes. OK, yeah. yeah, that should be live now. Sorry. Um, thank you, Chair. Uh, so this application is for the erection of seven dwellings. Um, before I start the presentation, um, we have received one additional rep, um, which raises health and safety issues due to the already busy junction, um, as it is the main exit and entry route between um, the properties of phase one and phase two of that wider development. OK, so the first slide is obviously showing you the site 
um, outlined in red. Um, this aerial photograph is slightly outdated um, in that obviously the further development has um, continued around the site. Um, but it does obviously give you that wider context. Um, obviously, so yeah, you've got the site here outlined in red. Um, the site is within the DDB um, and it's also within the local plan allocation Chick 1 land at Patton Lane. Um, and the, the site in question, this um, parcel of land has remained undeveloped um, and vacant whilst development has been constructed around it. Um, the next slide is showing the proposed site plan. Um, so you've got this terrace of three properties um, at the front of the site facing onto Old Ridge Road. Um, and then you've got this single storey garage here, um, which is shared by units one and two, and they've both obviously got a parking space in front of their garage space. Um, you've then got these four properties at the rear of the site, um, which are two sets of semi-detached, um, and they would be accessed off of Grays Road here. Um, and each dwelling has two parking spaces. Um, this next slide is showing the elevations for the proposed terrace properties um, facing onto Aldridge Road. The proposed materials are slate roofs. Um, you've got one unit would, which would be masonry brickwork and then two units that would be rendered. Uh, the next slide is showing the elevations of and the floor plan of that proposed single storey garage, um, which would be shared for units one and two. Um, and then you've got the floor plans for those terrace units. So you've got the ground floor plans yeah. and the first floor plans. Um, they are three, bread, three bedroom units. Uh, this next slide shows the elevations for the semi-detached properties. Um, again, they are render with a slate roofs um, and it's considered that de the design and materials of the units uh, reflect the surrounding development. Again, you've got the floor plans of the semi-detached units. Um, again, they are three bedroom, but you have got that one smaller bedroom slash study office area. Uh, this next slide shows street scenes. So you've got that proposed terrace of three, um, the single storey garage, and then the neighbouring property here um, of Aldridge Road. Um, and then at the bottom of the, the screen, um, you've got the, the semi-detached units and obviously seeing them in relation to each other there. Um, this first photo um, sh shows where the proposed access would be located off of um, Grays Road and obviously you've got the neighbouring properties of Grays Road there too. Um, this photograph is to show the relationship with the side of the neighbouring property of Aldridge Road um, and that's also the property you saw in the street scene elevation. Uh, this photo is looking at the site from, from Grays Road um, and obviously just to show you the site itself. <coughs> and then I have got a closer up photo um, again showing the site itself from uh, the pavement of Graves Road, but also showing you the relationship with the, the surrounding residential development. Um, Obviously, the history of the site is set out in a lot more detail in the officer's report, but I did want to kind of just provide a, a brief summary. Um, so as part of the wider outline permission, which included the current site we are considering today, um, in response to public consultation as part of that application, the provision of a doctor's surgery was included. Um, and this permission included a section 106, which required um, an employment scheme to be submitted to, to secure B1 floor space, a doctor's surgery and a vet's. Um, it did also include some scope for an amended employment scheme um, if the vet's or doctor's surgery couldn't be provided on the site. Um, re reserve matters applications were then approved um, and the site for the doctor's surgery, um, as shown as part of the outline application, um, was then shown to accommodate the 10 commercial units on the site um, and then that was when the current site in front of us 
was identifi identified as um, the site for a doctor's surgery. And this site was then excluded from the red line of those reserved matters applications. Um, since then, um, the NHS CCG have since concluded that the site is not suitable for a doctor's surgery. Um, and they give reasons due to its size, location and the transport options for patients. Um, although they do say, although they do state that obviously a need for a, doctor, a site for a doctor's surgery still remains, but this site isn't suitable for that. Um, and the other thing to note is that obviously the rest of the development has since been built out. So there is no longer any um, other sites within the development for that doctor's surgery. Uh, the officer recommendation for this one is a approval um, and that is subject to conditions and informatives. Those conditions are uh, include uh, materials, details of hard landscaping and unexpected land contamination condition uh, for the development to be carried out in accordance with the agreed um, biodiversity mitigation and enhancement plan. Um, parking and turning as submitted, access as submitted. Um, the submission of a scheme for electric car charging points and the submission of a construction management plan. Uh, and that's it. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Emma. Can we now hear uh, from Councillor John Worth, uh, John Worth Dorset Councillor Chicker Award. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, yes, I hope you can see me. I've uh, all night. It's I can suddenly hear you. It's not my camera off again. I'm back on again. Right. Thank you very much, Chairman and members of the okay, committee. Um, yes, I've been quite heavily involved in trying to secure a. Uh, it's not a doctor surgery in the area now. It's we are going for a full blown medical centre. Um, it was stated that the um, there is no other potential land. Um, with regard to this development that is now built out. However, there is a um, large green open space at the Putton Lane end of, of this site. Um, that large green open space, um, it is proposed to be um, transferred across to the Town Council um, when the development's completed. And the Town Council did have a meeting with Dorset planners and um, Fry's uh, the builders um, that was brokered by the uh, planners at Dorset. Uh, members of the town council were there and also both of the Dorset uh, council members for the area were there. Um, and we proposed that we could use part of that land for the health centre as we felt the need for a health centre outweighed the need for some extra open space. Um, Phil Fry, the managing director of uh, Fry's, um, more or less dismissed that out of hand straight away, although he said he would go away and consider it and we never really heard anything back on that. Um, but he did helpfully suggest that we could use um, some of the land that the town council already has, i.e. the Willow Bed Field, which is an open space that uh, is already in the council control, um, which we didn't think was appropriate. Um, and moving on, I did raise two points with the planning officer. Um, however, I didn't um, receive a reply to either of these points, so I'm raising them again. Uh, maybe I've got it wrong, maybe I haven't. Um, this is to do with paragraph 63 of the MPPF that sets out the provision of affordable housing, and it should not be sought for residential developments that are not major developments, other than in designated rural areas where policy sets out a lower threshold of five units or fewer. fewer. Um, However, in the 1997 housing order, the parish of Trickle is designated a rural area under section two of the Act, part six. Um, so it shows that the parish is in a rural area. Um, and I just put that in that uh, maybe that is a reason why we could have um, some affordable housing. Um, and um, I also would like to say that uh, with regard to the employment units, etc., and um, the non-provision of the doctor's surgery, um, I thought that um, 
there should be um, an application for um, a variation. Um, and I would have thought that that would have been prior to um, the deed of variation would have been asked for prior to an application for planning permission to build because that's an assumption that they would get the deed of variation. Um, so instead of a doctor surgery, it would be used for employment and they haven't shown that they've tried to market this as an employment area other than when it was going to be a doctor's surgery. Um, so I'm, I'm at a bit of a sort of a quandary. I really need some advice from the officer whether I've got it wrong um, with regard to both those points that it's in a rural er exception area, so it should have a provision for some affordable housing. Uh, the deed of variation should have been applied for firstly. Um, I'd like to hear the officer's comments on that. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Worth. Uh, I'd like to hear now, please, from Emma Telford uh, and then from Anne Collins, please. Emma, do you have any comments to make? Oh, yes, thank you, Chair. Um, so in relation to the first point about the affordable housing, um, you are you are correct in that um, areas that fall within um, rural areas, um, the, the threshold would be five units and then they'd have to provide affordable housing. Um, but that that's based on whether or not it's located within the area of outstanding natural beauty. Uh, so as this site isn't located within um, the AOMB, um, it is those, it's the 10 units, which is the threshold for the provision of affordable housing. Um, and then on to the next point about the deed of variation. Um, I have set out in my report um, that it's important to stress that in determining this application, the council is treating this application as a separate matter to the requirements of the section 106. Um, requiring the submission to an approval of an, an employment scheme. Um, so at this stage, it cannot be assumed that any decision of the council in relation to this current application um, is an indication um, as to how the breach may be pursued or whether the application to modify the section 106 in the future would be considered acceptable. So they are being treated as two, two separate issues. Um, and that's that's it from me. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Emma. Um, Can I just come back, Chairman? Yes, yes, Councillor Worth. Yeah. Um, on the point of the the section one hundred and six, if this um, area hadn't been included for a doctor's surgery, if if that hadn't been offered up, I'm sure that the one hundred and six would have probably been written differently, and we would have got other planning gains. Um, so I think we've lost out there. Um, and on the point of that housing, I. Um, the affordable housing, as far as I could find out, it was just a designation of a rural area. It didn't make mention of uh, being uh, next to an ANOB. So, okay. um, and I've had this confirmed by another officer that Do um, Chickerel is a rural exception area. Um, so I'm a bit confused. Well, the answer is I, I, I've given you special discretion to come back there because I appreciate you have waited a long time to, to speak. Uh, Anne Collins, do you have um, any comments to make? No, Chair, I didn't have anything further to add other than what Emma had said. I don't know if Lara has anything to add. Uh, yes, Legal Officer Lara. Lara. Lara ought to hear. Just in terms of the 106, um, the order is, is not significant. The application to vary the 106 can come in after this matter has been determined. Right, thank you. Uh, can we now hear, please, from Councillor Jean Dunphy? Uh, Councillor Jean Dunphy? Yeah. Uh, you are listed to speak? Yes. Uh, um, please proceed. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I think as it stands, this house is okay for seven houses but as uh, as has been mentioned previously i'm disappointed to see this application that is before you today it should have been our health center for chickrell and that's what we were promised i regret that the ccg 
have rejected this site. I feel it does have, it did have some advantages. It, it was relatively central and, and relatively spacious, although I accept it may not have been absolutely ideal. I'm particularly, well, I'm very concerned about the corner between Old Ridge Road and Grays Road. And during this past week, I've had two incidents myself going down that road, driving down that road. The first one, there were cars and vehicles parked almost both sides and a car was was overtaking a large van and it actually almost um, made contact with my vehicle. Well, we both managed to stop. The next incident I've had in that area in the past few days was trying to drive down, being on the wrong side of the road because of parked vehicles again. Another car coming um, from the corner on the bottom and I've had to reverse up Grays Road. And after that, I thought, well, We've got vans parked, we've got cars parked. When we have seven more houses, possibly up to 14 more vehicles trying to come in and out, it's going to create even more chaos. Now this corner from Oldridge to, Gro to Grays Road is very sharp. It's a 90 degree corner and it also actually has a build out in it. And I think it's quite a dangerous corner. I feel due to that, the, the traffic and, um, and what I've experienced these, these past few days, that I can't really vote for this plan. If the in exit entrance were turned around 90 degrees so that it was off Aldridge Road, which is more open, there's more space there, and there is a better sight line, then I wouldn't really have any objections. Let me see what was I've got here. Other than that, other than this exit entrance, I think the plan is acceptable. It's, it's what it is, it's a decent enough plan, but that is my concern. Not only my concern, but the concerns of residents who live down that road and opposite. So thank you, Chairman. And I will now leave the meeting. Okay, thank you, Jean. Uh, we will now hear from the agent, uh, David Lothink, uh, from CG Fry and Son. And then after that, we'll hear from highways officers on this application. So we will now hear the words uh, of David Lothink. Thank you, Chairman. So the statement we have from the agent is... Yes, please read the statement. Yeah, in the interests of clarity, the original permission for the Putton Lane development nearly 10 years ago included a surgery site as a result of the applicants hearing local concerns through the con consultation process. There was no policy requirement for a surgery at the time, policy EA6 of the previous local plan, and no evidential requirement. The applicants, however, included a surgery and worked for eight years with a local pr practice to deliver it, deliver it. Unfortunately, the practice's business plan was not accepted by the then Primary Care Trust. Meanwhile, time moved on and the current local plan allocated substantial new development to Chickrell. Others deemed the reserve Pattern Lane site um, to no longer be adequate being too small and poorly related to new allocations. It is understood that another site is now under consideration for a significant medical hub building. The reserve site is therefore no longer required or appropriate. Given that it is completely surrounded by Brown's Crescent to the south and the new Putton Lane Grays to field development on the other side, it seems completely logical to permit residential development on it. 
The site is not allocated for any other use and is in the chit called DDB. The scheme will pay its fair share of seal and a financial contribution can be made towards the delivery of the medical hub on another site. Thank you for listening to this statement. Uh, thank you, Chelsea. Uh, can we now hear from Mr Graham? Do we have Mr Graham with us? It will be Guy Tetley. Or uh, Guy. Uh, deal with the, uh, West Tetley. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, apologies for non uh, non yeah. visuals. Are you able, uh, Mr. Tatley, uh, are you able to put your video? My on? my video is not working, unfortunately, ah, due to a site okay. incident uh, with my laptop. So apologies for that. Um, as I understand it, there are two concerns that have been raised. Uh, one is the parking uh, of the, the amount provided. It complies with with um, with the uh, with guidance. So and, the, and also the layout enables informal areas of parking within the site itself uh i don't know if on the on the screen at the moment you can see it the, the, there was a widened access uh, there and then so to the it would be to the west of that i guess uh, there are areas there vehicles could uh, could temporarily park and also to the south of um spaces 004 uh like a temporary parking could occur there um so yes as i say it it, it uh, complies with god guidance on that with regards to the access uh the um the access on the east of the site that complies with local and government guidance it is a, a sufficient distance from that corner you're getting appropriate sight lines both north and south there so uh that's uh, like i said that complies and that is the same for the um the smaller area of parking for units one and two uh again and units one and two are no different to um similar uh proposed uh, similar existing accesses uh, frontage accesses to the um, to the west of the site okay oh oh and one other thing actually just to add the there is a mention of also the crossing point uh, on the northeast corner of this site directly on that bend um, that is something that is still ongoing uh, they uh, highways I've talked to the highways uh, adoption team today and they are chasing fries to put in um, uh, tactile paving on that crossing point. They are also going to put in um, traffic, uh, sorry, parking white lines through there and monitor that situation uh, ongoing to see what will happen uh, with that. But as it stands, it sh this development itself is acceptable. But that's something that, as an aside. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Tetley. Uh, I have a list of councillors who want to comment and uh, question, uh, starting with Councillor Nick Arland. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'm glad I'm not the only one confused. Um, I see Councillor Worth was also confused. Um, my, my comment is mostly based around the, the, the medical centre or the surgery or lack of. Um, it's mentioned in the narrative about a contribution in lieu of for seven houses and it, it's a trivial amount. Well, to be honest, the, the, the surgery was meant to provide for the, the whole 220 uh, back in 2010 or 2011 when it was originally approved. So obviously any contribution should be substantially more. And I'm I'm glad to hear from the developer that they are prepared. But um, I hope that when the Section 106 comes for its inevitable amendment, which it will do, um, that we secure that funding for the medical centre, wherever that may be. And I'd just like to finish by proposing that we accept the, the um, officer's recommendation and approve the application. Uh, thank you, Councillor Ireland. Uh, could we now hear from Councillor Kate Weller? Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, uh, I would be happy to second Councillor Ireland's proposal on that. Um, I've got a couple of things that I'd like to add before we continue, though. Um, I can't comment on Councillor Dunseeth's thoughts on the traffic. I don't know the area quite as intimately as she does, but her comments do seem to be fairly valid. What I'm concerned about, and, and Councillor Ireland has just stated it, so I want confirmation from our officers actually that um, I don't know what we can do retrospectively, but we do need to be assured that land is being made available by Fry's. I, I think Fry's are the developers, aren't they? Um, by Fry's that land is available for the health centre because it most certainly is needed in Chickwell now um, and that 
there's a renegotiation on the 106 agreement because clearly the situation has now changed. Um, otherwise, I'm happy to uh, go along with Councillor Ireland's um, proposals. Right, uh, we will now hear from Councillor Sue Cocking. Hello, um, actually Councillor Kate Weller um, asked a similar question to mine. It was just a, a, a site has been identified. I'm pretty sure I heard right that a site had been identified for the health centre. Is that correct? Or that there's just going to be some land? It wasn't confirmed either way, really. And I just wanted to know whether is a specific site being identified or it will be in the future? For the uh, uh, would would you like to comment any on this, Emma, the case officer, Emma Telford? Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I was actually hoping to pass to Anne Collins if I can. OK, Anne. Um, Hello, Anne. Sorry. Thank okay. you, Chair. Um, yes, I mean, I the doctor surgery is obviously and where it may or may not go in the future is a separate matter this application i've not been party to discussions although i understand what councillor worth has said is correct that i think that a potential site had been identified adjacent or near to the willow bed hall um i don't know who owns that land it was implied that it was under the care of um, the town council possibly um, and obviously it isn't the subject of a planning application or even a planning permission at the moment. So members need to be aware that there is no absolute guaranteed certainty around the provision of the doctor surgery on that other site that's mentioned. I wouldn't want members to have a false impression, but I do understand that there are some ongoing discussions around it. Right. Well, we've heard about the comments from the N NHS. We have a proposal from uh, Councillor Nick Ireland. Uh, do we have anyone to second this? I was under the impression, Kate, that you were happy to second this. Yes, Chairman, happy to second. Right. So we will now go through the list of councillors. Uh, I, I will vote to approve. Uh, Pete Barrow. Approve. Uh, Councillor Clayton. Approve. Uh, Councillor Sue Cocking. Approve. Uh, Councillor Dunseat has left the meeting. Uh, Councillor Gray. Approve. Uh, Councillor Louis O'Leary has left the meeting. Uh, Councillor Shortell. Approve. Uh, Councillor Sarah Williams. Good. I've just got a quick question before I uh, vote, and that is regarding the 106. Um, because I've, as Nick said, I, I understand that uh, Fry's were going to, happy to increase increase the contribution towards the health centre. Can I have some um, something on that from Anne Collins, please? Or, or, or indeed, whether a comment from Emma Telford, Anne Collins, or the legal officer Lara. Uh, Anne, Chair. Um, yes. I think Fry's were talking about making a contribution, but they weren't talking about making that contribution to us as Dorset Council. They were looking to possibly make it direct to the CCG or the Town Council or another suitable organisation. As Emma explained, there was no justification in respect to this current application to seek a, a contribution for the doctor's surgery. Um, so you would be approving these seven houses, if that's what you're looking to do, with no contribution secured albeit they would need to make a separate application for the variation of the Section 106 agreement. Thank you for the clarification. Uh, Councillor Kate Weller has uh, seconded. So on this basis... Uh, excuse me, I uh, haven't actually voted. I asked a question. I haven't no, voted. no, no. On this basis, I'm going to, going to pass it back to Councillor Sarah Williams as for any other questions you may have yeah before voting yeah um i understand that the um a variance of 106 has got to be made and i would hope that maybe there would be 
um, rather more substantial contribution towards the medical uh, medical center once when that variance goes through. But on the uh, actual planning application, I approve. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Williams. So this application has been Chair, Chairman, could I just interject? Subject, I, I haven't yes. heard a verbal vote from councillors Nick Ireland or Kate Weller. Uh, can you just clarify that, Nick? Well, yes, I, I've proposed it, so yes, I do approve. Yes. And, 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 and Kate, Kate, for the benefit of the minutes. Kate, Kate Weller, yes, Denise, I approve. Thank you. OK, thank you. Right, thank you, members. Uh, as it is now 12.51, I believe the appropriate thing to do is to now adjourn for the lunch break. Does anybody have any comments?